No. Hi there, everyone. This is the ABCs of RPGs, where we teach you the basics of tabletop role-playing games. Ooh. This campaign, we're covering the granddaddy of all tabletop role-playing games, Dungeons & Dragons, specifically their Essentials Kit. Uh, in the campaign inside the Essentials Kit is called the Dragon of Ice Spire Peak which has the party uh, tackling and like trying to find out where the the white dragon cryovane is located, which actually, last week, our party found out. Uh, my name is Spencer Reese. I'm the Game Master for the evening, and I'm joined by my players, Dalton. Hello, everybody. I'm Dalton. I'm playing Ufo, and both Dalton and Ufo are a little tired uh, today for, for, <laughs> for both travel-related reasons, actually, funnily enough. Mm. How's Dan doing? Uh, you know, Dan is Dan is all right. Uh, Dan is also feeling a little bit laggy, as is uh, Bjorn. Bjorn might be feeling a little bit more chipper today, though. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see. We'll check in with Bjorn. <laughs> and then we also have Justin. What's up, everybody? I'm Justin. I play Dot Crucivers, the full time. Cleric of St. Cuthbert, part-time amateur pro wrestler. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. All right. And finally, Christian playing. Hello. I'm playing Novo Adar, who is just the coolest of them all. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. I guess if we're going with just how we're feeling today, um... There's a lot going on. A little flustered. <laughs> we need to chill out and play some D and D. So that's yeah. where we're at. Yeah. Oh, chill it's... out. <laughs> play a little D and D. It's Mother's Day right now, so we've all we've all yes, happy and chill, Mother's you know. Day. Happy all Mother's of the mothers Day. who are watching our stream yeah. right now. Yeah. yeah. None of you. All the moms. <laughs> all the. <laughs> Although I don't know who we got. Maybe oh maybe there might be some out there. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Thanks, thanks Mom. I I know there's a podcast called uh RPGs Loves Moms. Yeah, we yeah, know. yeah, sure. Crazy. Wait, there is a <laughs> podcast moms. out there called uh Dungeons and Daddies, I think. So there's gotta be one called Dungeons and Mommies. Uh, but that mommy might be something else. <laughs> mommy? Sorry, mommy? Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. This Anyways, is, this. Exactly. this oh no. <laughs> <laughs> but also, we have Ashley who plays Naivara, which is twin to Novo. She's going to be joining us in just a little bit. I got a text from her, so we're going to be good. But we, uh, before I start the uh, the catch up, the uh, the the recap from last week, I'm going to ask all of you guys one of the get to know your questions, and the get to know your question for this week is. What was the last book that you read? We we already rolled before this, so now I'm asking everybody their question. Does Ufo's spell book count as the last book he read? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Because <laughs> that's most assuredly the last book he read. That makes sense. Or or it's the gnome's magic book, if we're not counting your book, right? True, so. true, yeah. <laughs> the magic of gnome and god. Does... Does that job post that Bjorn read for this for for the party? Does that count as a book? Because that's I I you know I think it counts for for Bjorn. <laughs> okay, that's about that's about all Bjorn knows how to you know. He I because really hard on that. Doc is giving him lessons. Does Doc have like a book that like he's helping him read or anything or? Uh, um, yes, he reading does. Reading for dummies. Actually, um, he has. <laughs> He has his scriptures. Uh -huh. um, so his it's it's a short book. It's a short book. Uh, Saint Cuthbert is a yep. a god of practicality. <laughs> um, so he, the scripture one of the, he is he has he has a script a scripture called Saint Cuthbert and Common Sense. Um, <laughs> it's a uh, it's a thirty page book. Um, it's pretty simple in text. Um, it uses very simple phrases like obey the law, be good, and use common sense. So the first three um, makes sense. It's a, yeah, it's a yeah. That's the first sentence of the text. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It's an easy read. Right. So, it's, so it's are you like the illiterate masses? 
Wait, so you, know. you like straight up missionarying like Bjorn? Like, because everything. Yeah. Bjorn made, no, no, no. We just use it. We just use. Like, we just use the, the, book, the book. The book has like you lessons. Know? Like, no, no. Brainwashing, no, no. man. No, the book <laughs> has like lessons, and if you get something out of it, that's great. But we're really just doing it to like get the letters. Mm -hmm. um, and they're like short, simple right. words. So it's an easy way for people mm -hmm. to learn how to read. No, no. Brainwashing people into my religion is not cool. That's um, not cool. And we don't yeah. do that. Doc Conquistador Rivers, okay. No, no, it's in the book, actually. See this? Don't make people do stuff they don't want to do. Right there, it's in the book. I don't know how to read, so... You do, that's one of the things that we, like, first started on, because you'd, like... Sometimes you, we, well... Do we have a dragon know. to kill? <laughs> we have a dragon to kill. So, I okay. I really hope Doc isn't, like, creating, like, some sort of curriculum for Neverwinter Schools, because no. it's not going to be very unbiased. Doc has no agenda. <laughs> Doc, Doc, Doc Rivers, much like, look, so there's this order of monks, okay? They're far away from Doc Rivers' home, but he learned of them. They are the Wu-Tang order. Oh, my God. A clan. And they are for the children, and they taught Doc Rivers to be also for the children. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Nova, mm -hmm. what's your book? Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I was really trying to come up with something funny, but I, I, I don't. Well, we can um, go back to know, Doc real quick. I, I think I, it's the I, scriptures, I, though. <laughs> Just the scriptures. You want to learn more about the scriptures? No, no, wait, wait. Here that says, no, no, yep, save us. Share, share your cookies. <laughs> Everybody likes a man with cookies. Are the cookies uh, metaphorical or are they literal cookies? cookies? Tell, tell me, Justin, if 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 there was another one, I think I think it's uh, cash rules everything around me. But give Three. that cash to the poor. Yes. <laughs> Get the money after that. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. Yes, and those dollar dollar bills go to the needy. Novo, right could it? That, see? You need it... to read the whole thing. <laughs> Very important. Mm -mm. Contextual clue mm -mm. is, you know, it's a really Novo. important part of the book. Could it be that, like, maybe it was like some music? Maybe you read like your, your, your like a latest piece uh, for your organ. Uh, maybe it was like a famous musician out, uh, out, out of Neverwinter, or maybe while you're in Barthens, you came oh. across like a music sheet or like a music mm -hmm. book or something like that. You know? Yeah, I, I think I, 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 that that actually brings something up here. Um, Novo has been very interested in the. The the musical just prowess and 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 writings of of uh, a Doja Cat, um, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, he's pretty pretty good. Uh, but also Bach, Bach too. So right. a wide range of... <laughs> on the same kind of level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Okay, well, let's get into the recap from last week. So. You guys had just cleared out uh, the all the orcs at Butterskull Ranch. Uh, Big Al, uh, Kalzorn, was very thankful. Um, and in fact, you guys were gifted with the strange, mysterious black box that was in the cellar that uh, Big Al said the orcs stole from a caravan or something. So you had four keys, and there was four locks on there. You found out that each above each lock was a different picture of an animal. And you found out that the letters in, uh, well, Ufo figured out that the letters of of each named of the animal, like Snake, has five letters. So the five teeth key unlocked uh, that portion of the chest. So in it, Ufo found a magical shaped fireworks, like Roman candle, essentially. And he found out that he gets eight charges. Uh, it, it, you roll a d8 plus one charges per day with a max of eight charges, and uh, yeah. it shoots off 60 feet, and whatever he's thinking at the time, it, it forms a firework shape in, in that whatever he's thinking. Uh, which, the first thing, he just had a normal firework, but the second one he shoot off was uh, a butter skull, which may have freaked out the neighbors just a little bit. So... Uh, but then afterwards, you guys went back to Coneyberry, and you were investigating the, the villager gold that you heard about. And you came across this shrine, guarded by orcs. 
um, he snuck in through the cover of night and found uh, found a like a warded door inside of the the shrine, which you were able to figure out through by learning different reading different words from different statues in different languages. Sorry, I'm all burpy right now. Um, and then you were able to unlock the door by saying the key phrase, uh, which Christian figured out what it was. Um, inside, you found uh, the altar to uh, what Doc Rivers saw was the symbol of Severus, the god of uh, divination and, like, foresight. Um, and also, upon touching that said altar, Doc Rivers collapsed to the ground uh, to the shock of many of the other party members. Uh, but it turns out Doc astral projected out of his body and like rose up above the 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 shrine and flew over towards the mountains to to a what seemed to be some sort of hold like a, a keep or a hold of some sort to which mm -hmm. the dragon Cryovane was sleeping on top of. Um, and then boom, he was back in his body. He told the party about it. Said, "Hey, I know where Cryovane's chilling at, uh, so we know where to get him." Uh, the party then traveled back to Fandolin uh, because they decided, well, we're going to we're gonna finish up this loggers camp quest first, and then maybe we'll go check that out, or whatever the party decides to do. Um, but they, they got the, the ox, uh, whose name is Vincent, <laughs> uh, and you guys were about to set out to the loggers camp. So, yeah, that's where we're at. So, just to let you guys know, uh, well, I should I should clarify one thing before we continue on with our session, real quick. Uh, now, for the first two quests up until level three, you guys were supposed to earn a level per quest, um, and then it turns out for each follow up quest after that, you're supposed to complete two before you get your level up, but We've been doing one level per quest anyways, just to kind of speed things a little bit along, because uh, I'm sure you guys know that if we were to play, like, everything in this Essentials Kit, we could go on for, like, six months. Like, it's it's a pretty substantial campaign for, mm -hmm. like, first through fifth level. There's a lot to do. And reading through it, like, you guys haven't been able to do everything, and I don't think it's designed for, like, you to do everything i think it's supposed to be like eh, there's a lot of choices here whatever you want to do type deal so um we're doing it just to kind of speed things along and get through some of the other other quests and everything to show them off but uh but yeah so um and this this quest specifically so just to kind of give you a little bit behind the scene for the dm screen um loggers camp has its own thing and each each different section each different quest has its own page specifically in this quest it gives you traveling um circumstances to get to loggers camp and what i mean by that is essentially it details this out i we've been having trouble detailing like how far everywhere is uh and but it says the characters can travel 24 miles in a day and the loggers camp is roughly 50 miles north of Fandolin. So it says it will take you'll need to take a long rest and then you can get there on the second deck. Um but uh one of the things also too when we get there is when you guys get to Neverwinter, it actually details out like hey, when you get to this hex, when you get to Neverwinter, you have to make a survival check. Like whoever has the highest survival is the leader and you have to make a check and if you don't succeed, you waste miles going forward. So I'm going to need your guys' help because uh, we're, we're going to like essentially kind of like try to calculate this out and kind of like figure out how you guys are going to get through. So um, from here, let's go ahead. I have this wagon right here on the map here down at Fandolin. <laughs> so if you guys want, I think, is it this hex right here that's going to be put you at the closest to the edge of the forest without traveling as many hexes through? Because I would imagine you guys kind of, like, follow the trail all the way to the edge of the forest, and then we got to start making those checks. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking, could we go around? Like, stick oh, to the road? That is 
that is definitely something you can do. Here, let me give you guys control of uh, this wagon. I mean, I'm no, I'm no navigatesman, uh, or donkey guy, but what's what's pulling the cart? <laughs> it's an ox. It's an ox. It's an ox. Okay. Yeah. Ox I'm, named Vincent. All right, I'm no ox ma donkey master. Donkey guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't. Here, yeah, okay. real wait, wait, wait. I get it. I get it. You don't know a lot about oxes. Yeah. That's real okay. quick. I let's... mean, getting an ox through a forest is. I mean, they're not nimble creatures. They're right. not known for their nimble as an ox is not a phrase. No. <laughs> strong um, as an ox is. Right. right? Yeah. Is. Strong as an That's ox. That's true. Strong. Right. Strong creature, not nimble. Ah, strong. Real quick, yeah. let's. Uh, Ashley is just now getting in, so let's cut to a quick break and come quick back break. with her. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. So far, we're looking to see you forward after the break. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man. Be right back. We'll be right back. It won't be too long. Welcome back to the ABCs of RPGs. We were just gone for a, a, a couple couple seconds there just because uh, we had to get Ashley all in and set up. Welcome in, Ashley. We, uh, we, we've caught everybody up with, like, the recap from last week. Uh, the question that I asked everybody was, what was the last book that you read? Uh, Ufo chose his spellbook or, like, the spellbook The Magic of Nomengard. Uh, Bjorn's been reading <laughs> the quests. But also, uh, um, Doc Rivers has been showing him the scriptures of St. Cuthbert. Uh, we had a whole big discussion about whether or not that means he's a uh, conquistador and is converting Bjorn to <laughs> the religion. Oh, Lord. But Doc claims, <laughs> Doc claims he has no ill intention, and that is, yeah, that yeah, is yeah, just, yeah, yeah. yeah. No agenda. Why, why would I have an agenda? No agenda. Bjorn, um, my friend. Yeah. And then uh, uh, Novo was reading some music he picked up uh, by a Doja cat and a uh, um, and some Bach. So nice, I yeah. love it. So, what was the last book uh, Naivara read? Awesome. Uh, quick rewind. Hi guys, I'm Ashley. As you all should know, I am so sorry I'm late. I am in vet school and I am in my fourth year and I had some patients to take care of tonight. So that is why I'm late. Making sure Out the there, horses are okay. Lives. Yes, yeah. horse lives. Um, but yes, Naivara, She's really embarrassed. She is not going to tell anyone that this is what she's reading. Ooh. She, I'd imagine that she'd read it with like a dust cover for a book on how to trapeze or something like that. So, so yeah. they know yeah, that to cover it. You yeah, know, to cover it up. Wow. She's reading some uh, some smutty elven romance novels. Ooh. Yes. Is there? There's a shirtless dude on the cover. Yes. That's mm -hmm. why she has the dust cover for trapezing. Mm -hmm. But yes, there is mm -hmm. a shirtless dude on the cover looking. Yeah. Uh, he <laughs> does have long hair. Mm -hmm. um, obviously. She, her dress is like off the shoulder. Of course. You know it. And she's like longingly standing next to a window or something. Mm. Yeah. So mm. that's the last book Navarra's read. That's she incredible. goes through them quickly. She picks up a new one in every town she goes to. Yeah. Um, that's like one of her favorite ways to explore new towns is to pick up the local smut. So, you know, <laughs> if she goes to a gnome and guard, she's going to try and find the smutty gnome romance novels. And if she's <laughs> going to Bjorn's hometown, she wants some Dorvan smut, you know, where, where she, she, she doesn't, uh, she doesn't mind as long as it's a smutty romance novel and no, she leave so, the far... Out on. <laughs> <laughs> so far she thinks that novo doesn't know we'll, we'll have to find out when christian comes back if novo knows and yeah. just turf yeah, around which was the gnome that was pushing the giant mushroom into the barrel wrong so many times that Doc Rivers uh, fixed it. She right. actually probably slipped you some fan fiction, but it's not hers. Yes. It's turns not out, hers. <laughs> turns out it was it was about a like she wouldn't give the author's name, but it was about some gnome falling in love with a crossbow. So, oh my mm. god, <laughs> I saw that one. It was an uncomfortable. It's a good one. Pictures. <laughs> 
Oh, <laughs> uh, so we're back. We're back into this. So like going back into kind of like talking about the the traveling and stuff like that. So it's not featured in the essentials kit, but I know in the starter set of D and D, um, they talk about the three pillars of D and D, which is which is role play, combat, and like traveling, like environment, like exploration, essentially. Um, and uh, it, surprisingly, there's not a whole lot of exploration in the essentials kit. But for this one specifically, just to catch you up, Ashley, there is. So it talks about that essentially there's travel to the camp. There's a whole section within the quest, this quest specifically, that says the characters can travel 24 miles in a day, which wasn't under anything else before this. <laughs> but it says the camp is roughly 50 miles north of Phandalin. And so it says, like, the characters need to take a long rest in between that and everything. And when you enter Neverwinter Woods, it specifically can lead you guys astray. So it says, take the person, take the player uh, who has the highest wisdom and make them the navigator. And they have to pass a survival check, eat hex. And if they, they pass it, they can go through like normal. But if they fail, they you guys roll a d4 and you lose that many miles uh, uh, of travel. So... Yes, did you, you have know? something, Justin? Oh no, I just sorry, I got distracted watching myself in the stream oh. when I put my visor down and then I did. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Doc, Doc Rivers caught a reflection of himself in like a nearby pool of water. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pulled a narcissus. <laughs> yes, there yeah. it is. Pulled a little nar I, I pulled an actual narcissus. Yeah. So I was originally proposing, like, you guys could probably follow the Tribor Trail to, like, right about here and start making your way in. But but Dalton said, well, why don't we just go around it and then come in, and come in through the river? So what is there any is there any opinions about what you guys how you guys want to travel? I so feel are like we just going to go? Are we going to go gonna off? Be easier. Oh, sorry. Ashley, was, what did you say? I was going to say, I feel like going along the river, while it may I don't know, maybe a little bit of a longer route. I feel like it might be a bit quicker because the terrain won't be as rough going through the trees, especially when we have a cart of oxen. Yeah. Yeah. So, quick question. Is this just supposed to be, is, is like, all in through here supposed to be pretty smooth sailing? Is that the plan? Or are we going to, like, go up the trail over to the high road, over to Neverwinter, and then go all the way in? That's, I mean, that's what Ufo was suggesting, to, like, stick to established trail and then follow the river. Um, maybe cutting around the outskirts of the woods. But, I mean, I'm imagining that the woods isn't, like, a clear-cut like like jagged line like it is on the map and it's kind of a little bit less defined yeah um okay that's probably best uh yeah the but we are in a hurry so uh uh let's see here. if i if if i were to do the walk a compass along the trail spencer Yep. You said it was 50 miles north of Phandalin, like, as the crow flies. It says roughly, it, it does say at the top of this map, one hex equals five miles, and you guys can travel 24 in one day. Okay. And this is all rough terrain, right? Yeah, well... What is what is going on here? Like, see, that's so the thing. what I'm saying is, like, can we kind of... Can we cut up here and then cut through these few squares real quick rather than going down and up if if that's going to really like versus is it is it that much more helpful to take established roads yeah um you know? here's what i'm going to rule because there is the, the essentials kit doesn't have anything on this it literally just has two paragraphs that just tells me everything that i just told you guys which you guys can travel 24 miles in a day it's roughly 50 miles north when you get to the forest you have to make wisdom survival checks so i'm gonna say here's what i'm gonna roll traveling by road road probably speeds you up i'm gonna say you can travel two hexes um in the same amount of time like instead of like so in for rough terrain it's gonna be like one hex at a time and that's the normal five miles but okay. you can travel essentially 10 miles on road for the same amount of time. Okay, well then that that seals it, right? I we got to take the road. If we take the road, it's uh it's uh 100 
miles. If we take, if we go through the forest, it's 50 miles. Oh. Well, then we so probably want to take, we want to take the Tribor Trail down to here. And then this is the, like, this looks like the least amount of forest we're really going to have to go through. So we can kind of cut this way and then head directly in. If that's what the survival expert thinks we should do. I mean, my wisdom is 12, so. I was talking to Doc. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm saying yeah. I, I really don't have an opinion because, you know, not very wise. Okay. So by traveling, so essentially, we could just say instead of traveling, so for every hex on the road, it's going to be half the distance calculated. If you if you can travel 24 miles in a day, instead of each hex being 5 miles, it's kind of like 2.5. Does that make sense? Yes. So, okay, cool. Yeah, um, I mean, you would, could basically just use the same like difficult terrain rules that all other movement uses in D&D. Sure. Let's do that. I feel like we're overthinking this. It's <laughs> just a little bit. Probably. So, okay. So, are, we, are you guys going to come up to here, shall we say? Yeah, that's that's what we're doing then, right? We're going to come up yeah. this way cuz this is only 50 miles Five, compared to going down this way and up 10, is 100 miles. So, 15 20 And then do you want to start right here or right here? To the left. The where you're at right now. Okay, cool. Yeah. You guys should be able to control the wagon too. So that's about 24 miles right there, even traveling by road. So do you guys want to... It's it's the end of the day. Are you going to just like make let's... camp at the edge of the forest? Yeah. Yeah, let's yeah. do that. Okay. You guys make camp in. at the edge of the forest. And like while you're setting up camp, just as all the other times you've been on the road, once again, you hear... A cry in the distance. Ah! Ah. Coming out of the 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 area that Doc pointed out on the map where where Crowdane was, you see a white blur kind of fly over and land near the shrine of Savras where you guys were before. Oh. Mm. We should probably not go back there. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if he recognized it with Savras's magic that showed me mm -hmm. Cryovane and his seeking answers. Yeah, you said he looked at you, right? When you well, projected I mean, over. Do you I think was he might have really projected? But I don't know what dragons can or can't see. Yeah. They're magical creatures, so he may have well have seen me, but he doesn't know mm -hmm. who I am. And I doubt, I doubt Savros will give us up to a dragon. He's a god, after all. Okay. Nyvara's gonna not really, like, care about all of this, and she's gonna go to Doc, and she's gonna be like, so, like, what do you look like when you're astral projecting? Like, do you get to pick? Are, are you young again? Do you have hair again? I mean, are you just, like, a ball of light? Like, what, what, what do you look First like? First of all, Doc, Doc does have a full head of hair. Do you have <laughs> Do you have brown hair again, or is it still just gray? Well, it's actually kind of like a, a, a like a blackish, but uh, when it had all of its color. Do you but have yeah, all your, no, do you, no, no, no? I look, I look the same. Again, I don't, I didn't or... try and change form. It's, it's weird. You feel like cold oatmeal though to the touch. Like if you touch Ooh. yourself, you just feel like kind of like cold oatmeal Ooh, that sounds like i would vomit if i touched myself yeah. can astral projections vomit <laughs> i don't know ectoplasm maybe but i'm not i'm yeah. not sure i just i yeah. was i was i was astral projected <laughs> this isn't something i do regularly so yeah. i was ethereal and then i wasn't mm. it was pretty quick yeah we thought you were dead Oh, yeah, yeah. When I was just zooming through, I was like, that's it. I'm going to the beyond. St. Cuthbert <laughs> is going to judge me. And hopefully I'm not to be found wanting. Otherwise, he <laughs> cogsels in your spirit's head, and then you're just like nothing. <laughs> he hits you with his cogsel of justice, and you cease to be. 
Not a bad way to go. It's bleak, yeah, but bleak, but you know. You know, if you're if you're if you're good, I guess you have nothing to fear. <laughs> right. Which isn't maybe how everyone should live their life, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Ufo's about to send himself to see St. Cuthbert <laughs> after listening Ufo's to this. Wait, what, what did you say? Ufo was about to what? Uh, Ufo said he's about to go send himself to see St. Cuthbert after listening to all this while he's trying to set up camp. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. So, so yeah, you. So I like to think Navarro and, and Doc, uh, Doc Rivers is like having this conversation. What's everybody else doing while they're getting ready for for camp and everything? Helping Ufo set up camp. Okay. Yeah, Bjorn. Bjorn and Ufo getting some personal time to kind of help set up camp. That's great. Maybe uh, Bjorn and I are trying to like figure out what to do with this ox. Is it a? Is it docile? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I have animal handling. Um... Yeah, it'll, yeah. It'll, it'll it'll be fine. Let's just uh, tie it up to like a tree or something, and maybe give it water. It, did, is, did you feed it? Did does it have to eat? It'll eat the grass. Do you, does it need to drink something? Yeah, it's, I said we'll give it a little bit of water from my pouch or whatever. Yeah, and like you maybe you like kind of pour it out, and it just kind of licks it, like laps it up while yeah. while you're while you're pouring it out and everything. And then it just kind of, it leans down, and it eats some grass, and it just starts chewing. Can I... Can I go, go, go weed through these supplies? Sure, yeah. I just want to get, get an idea of, like, what's, what we're transporting. Yeah. Make sure there's nothing unsavory in this cargo. Searching through the crate's contents, you find foodstuffs such as dried meat, blocks of cheese, loaves of bread, as well as casks of ale and flasks of oil. Yep. Cool. It's all legit, Most guys. We won't have to be charging a, a dangerous, dangerous goods <laughs> fee or, or nothing. We're, we're not. We're not running spice. Yeah. <laughs> Jobs legit. Don't worry. Yeah, All right. It's a little bit of a shame. I was kind of hoping to do some drugs today. <laughs> <laughs> I there's some uh, coney berries around here or whatever. <laughs> you still have any of those mushrooms? Uh, do I have any of those mushrooms? I think sure. You, I, I, I always do. I like to imagine like Bjorn's still been carrying around that barrel of mushroom wine, <laughs> yeah. just taking swigs of it. Yeah. Just got like a little pony keg <laughs> carrying around. Yeah. That's a little, it's not that much wine, honestly. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh but yeah, you guys you guys sit up camp. Night passes just fine. You wake up in the morning. You do, all, all of you are early wakers, I'm pretty sure, except for I think Bjorn sleeps in a little bit, but Doc Rivers kinda wakes them up usually, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, you guys do your morning routines and you can set out on the day again. So uh with that, it, unless you're yeah. Before we set out, just a really quick uh side note. So Christian, to answer the question at the beginning, I said that I read uh a lot of elven smut, but I hide it with a dust cover that's about trapezing. Um and I like to pick up new smut when I go to different places. So I wanted to know: Has Novo caught on, or does he have no idea? I don't know. It should I feel like I should like? Can, do I, I feel like, like I should like roll for that or something? <laughs> <laughs> if you want, yeah. Once you like, maybe Naira before going to bed uh, slips out her her acrobatics book and yeah. no novo can you give me a perception check real quick contested by actually Naivara's light of hand light of hand yeah okay perception by the way while you guys are rolling i do want to clarify something um this is something that i think i i knew when i first started playing D, &D but over time have forgotten Turns out there's no such thing as proficiency checks. It's only ability checks that you can add your proficiency to if you have it. So, like, essentially, 
you're making a a wisdom proficiency is wisdom or per, uh, perception is wisdom check but since you're proficient in perception you get to add that proficiency bonus to it why narvara is doing a dexterity check but adding her proficiency of sleight of hand into it which is a very interesting thing that I sometimes forget when when playing <laughs> when when playing D and D because I always think of abilities as like just the proficiencies, but you can make up any kind of check DMs out there based on any one of those core skills, so or stats. But anyways, um, oh, also other DMs that are watching, you can choose to add proficiency if you think it's something your character would know how to do. But even if there's not like a set skill check for it, but if yeah. it makes sense, you can give them that bonus if you, you know, you kind of want to like help them out a little bit. Yeah. Like I would argue that maybe Doc Rivers, uh, I'm not sure, does Doc, oh, well, you took performance, but let's say if Doc Rivers, a cleric, doesn't know performance, but like it has to do like a ceremony, instead of making that performance check, I'd say, oh no, just use religion. Like, you'd be proficient in doing ceremonies. You'd yeah. be fine with that. So, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So, But anyways, the rolls! Ashley, what did you get? I got a 21! Oh, Christian! What is your contested roll? Well, as my uh, wisdom would suggest, uh, I am none the wiser <laughs> with a six. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe... Just maybe you just weren't Maddox book. <laughs> yeah, maybe you just you don't you don't pay too much mind to like what Nivera does. It's her own thing. Yeah, so so yeah. there we go. I'm I'm not too concerned with her uh, squabblings. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> not paying any attention. Her her yeah extracurricular activity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's. Start your travel through Neverwinter Wood. So let's go ahead. Do you? Uh, can somebody move uh, the 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 wagon? Yeah. Into one of the hexes next. And with that, I believe our navigator, who has the highest wisdom survival check, is it? Is I, it? Uh, I will. I will. All right. Um, hold on. So Doc was praying, and he. You just hear him kind of just be like, "I can do that." Oh, yeah. yeah, let me do that. Thank you, thank you, Snake Hooper. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm picking this one. Oh. There's some oh. weird noises, man. Yeah, yeah well, I'm saying Doc is saying that in 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 common, right? He's not speaking tongues. To yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, not... and he's sitting there, and he's just sitting there. He's like on his knees, like this, like, mm. ooh, I can do that. Yes, please. What is it? What is it that your God's letting you do this time, Doc? Oh, he's letting me. He's letting. He's letting my magic flow through me. He's letting his 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 strength in combat flow yeah. through me to others, where I can create a a bond with someone after I touch them, and they will uh, become shrouded in light, and that light can deflect. Is said to be able to deflect blows and turn magic and prevent wound, even even strikes are said to not go as deep when wreathed in this magic as long as Ooh. they're they are close to me standing and fighting for his might yeah so anyway for for in rule terms i get i'm taking warding which gives oh, uh, yeah. the person i bless uh plus one to ac and saving throws and makes them resistant to all damage nice big and uh, that'll be Would for it you get hurt if the person gets hurt too nope i thought it did no that's oh. a different thing you're thinking of okay never no, mind this is just extra ac and this just makes them harder to hit and better in combat so i'm gonna take that and i'm gonna take uh find traps i am nice. i am gonna take that one and uh let's see i have One more. Oh yes, and then I've I've taken spells that will protect us against the the woes of nature. The woes of nature. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, perfect. Uh, by the way, as you're making these these survival checks through the forest, um, yes. I do want to let our two bards know that before a particular check, if you want to give Doc some inspiration, you can. 
Um, as well as um, if Doc, if you want to use guidance on these, that is something you can do. Like before, like you start moving oh, yeah. more in the forest, maybe you just pray to your to Saint Cuthbert and you you get that blessing and stuff. So yeah, I raise my I raise my amulet, or I raise my I raise my mace because that's my my holy symbol. Because yeah, Saint Cuthbert's holy symbol. I raise my mace and uh, my eyes glow a little bit as I look and try and see a, a path through the forest yeah as, as a deer would know all right let's move that wagon and make there. that roll justin um am i getting any getting any inspiration cards? from me sweet all right that's an extra d6 right mm -hmm. yep do you have 10 minutes to use that roll yeah, so and basically... You roll it before you know if it's a success for a failure. Yeah. Okay, sweet. So um, you're getting a lot of boosts here. Um, yeah, my guidance needs to get used before I do the thing. Uh, so... Ooh, nice. Oh, there we go. Good thing you had that guidance and that bark inspiration because you have passed. So you guys okay. move into that space and you haven't lost any kind of trick. Oh, now, you never added the D6 to it, though. I, I didn't oh. add the D6, but since you said I passed, I'm going to take it. Yeah. Well, just to let you know, this is over the course of the day. And since bark yeah. inspiration goes out uh, after 10 minutes... If you they... should use it. <laughs> yeah, oh, I should use it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I mean, I will... yeah. Well, if, if 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 I need to make this one check and this is the check, yep. then oh yeah, <laughs> that's okay. But like, just keep that in mind, Bards. That if you do give this to him, since it's a, t a ten minute time limit, um, oh, you right. can only 16 use instead of twelve. Yeah. Basically, if you give it to him, he's got to use it on that hex, or else it kind of goes away. So yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, whenever you're ready, move into the next heck and and hex and make your next check. Uh, alright, so we'll go into this one. Yeah, and, uh, and make sure, Bards, if you're gonna give it to him, I, I would say give it now, uh, give it now before he rolls and everything. But if I'm, you think he's fine with his guidance, then let's just keep going. Uh... uh um, actually, you know what? I am... Or um, is anybody going to give me guide or bardic inspiration? I don't think Let they me, are. I'll throw it at you, buddy. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right. I'll just play a little, like, a little tune. <laughs> oh, yeah. 26 is the check. Hey, okay. Moving to that next hex. All right. Beautiful. And... Hell yeah! Yeah, Nivara, uh, uh, Novo. While while Doctor Doc Rivers is making all these checks, how are you guys inspiring him? Uh. Oh, I. Yeah, you know, I was uh, I was playing a little, little little bit on my my flute, or my lute flute. Lute um, flute. <laughs> You know, something that, uh, oh, did I move that I think Doc I would Arsene? really enjoy. Sorry, Christian, you what were you know. saying? So, you know, just playing some, some music from, um, you know, that I think Doc would really enjoy, like, you know, I don't know, Soul Man, Blues Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Everybody needs somebody to love. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah, so what Navara is doing when she's doing the inspiring is she's uh she's going to go to Doc and she's going to be like, "Come on, Doc, let's uh let's dance it out so that you uh maybe it'll help you know the way better. Let's dance it out." Dance it out, and I I, I kind of make him dance it out. I make him do like a half-hearted robot and stuff. <laughs> so, dance it out. We're gonna get there. Dance it out. We're gonna get through the woods. Dance it out. Read that mm. map. Dance it out. <laughs> 
<laughs> and this is supposed Read to be math. helping, this right? Is, this is helping. This yes, yes, apparently it is. is helping me get through the <laughs> way. We're going. Don't trip um, on that fruit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, it takes a lot of the stress out of it, so it really lets me focus on what I need to do. This is actually very helpful. I, I need probably... a lot of sensory stuff going on to help me focus, and this is actually really helping me focus on. Because they're probably... being distracting, and I can just ignore them. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, it's probably helpful, because instead of us trying to look over your shoulder I mean... and be like... Do we mm -hmm. go there and like I'm pointing south of the loggers camp, the other direction? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just entertaining myself so you can do your thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you gotta think, you know, I, I'm the literally. Say, it represents the physical lack of distraction <laughs> <laughs> that I borrow would oh. normally pro provide. Um, <laughs> I love it. Uh, actually, so, uh, but I am going to use one of my second level spells here. Uh, yeah. And I'm going to use Owl's Wisdom and um, a small little spectral owl pops out from my holy, my, my mace as it kind of swoops around a little bit. And I'm going to get advantage on this roll. All right. <laughs> Wow. Okay, what, what? so I'll get a 15. Boom, you pass. Sweet. All right, do it again. All righty. And how long has it been? Uh, It's getting towards the end of the second day. No, but like since my last check, how long has it been? It's oh, been well, if you, how many hexes have you gotten? You done one, one hex. Two, three, four, five. No, no, no. We've, I've only gone one hex. Oh, one so, hex. Since the last yeah. hex, how long has it been? What's... Okay, you guys would reasonably be uh, traveling for... The reason why I'm for... asking is because I have concentration up to an hour in this check, and I don't know if I get... If, if it's only been an hour. Has it been more than an hour? Yes. Okay. Probably about two hours. I was trying to we calculate it. To... Be yeah. really no. hightailing it to get through five miles in rough terrain and with a wagon. Hour with a wagon, yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna take some guidance on this. Um, all right. Um, any any bardic inspirations? Yeah, I have another one on me. Sweet. And another one. And another. Cause he's a soul man. Okay, good. I actually needed them that time. So nineteen. Saint Cooper Soul Man. <laughs> right, that put us, Spencer, yeah. I believe that this puts us at the loggers camp. Yep. So now that you guys have already passed all of the the um survival checks, I can tell you that the DC was only a ten. Yeah, so, I figured when we get past it with a twelve. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't that hard for you guys, but um yeah, and here's I'm gonna say like essentially like every every hex was about maybe two, two and a half hours. And I'm gonna move you guys to the loggers camp. And you probably if you left at six AM, which what is like how early you most of you guys were like up and around, you probably get here close to like like in the evening you know uh or like 6 p.m like 6 p.m ish so let me kind of clear out a lot of this area for you sorry i'm just trying to make a lot of this open if you guys can put yourselves on the map that'd be fantastic you guys should have control over your tokens so don't mind me token. yeah don't mind me, I'm just uh, revealing the area. I do not see my token, Spencer. Okay, I will help you then. I okay. also do not see my token. Interesting. It's not in your handouts and stuff like that, where all the handouts and everything is? Oh, it should be in my handout? Mm. Hold on, hold on. Could you ping where you wanted us to drop down again, Spencer? Yeah, it's going to be to the south, the south road here. Right down here. Because okay. you came in through the south way. All right. Oh, sick. All right. You Everything... need to scale our tokens We're... down, Spencer. 
I will do that. Everything but the the kind of like the cabin over on the left side should be visible. If that's correct on your guys' maps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where, Can you where drop was... my token down? I don't know why it won't drop. Sure, I'll do that. No worries. Thank you. You'll have where, to show me. Where is it in the, in the handouts? So it should be at the top. Uh, if the third icon on the on the top uh, right, the third yeah, icon you, where it looks you like click an... your name and drag it from your name onto the screen. Uh -huh. Yeah. I can drag it, but it doesn't show up when I drag oh, it, which is. is odd. I moved you oh, down. Oh, I did it! You did? I did yeah, it. I did it too. Good. We Thanks. did it! Teamwork. We did it! We did it! Hooray! Nova, I'll put you on the map too. There you are. Okay. Do you want us to oh, down here. <laughs> yeah, arrange yourselves like you. Oh, oh. Yeah, then let me delete the other you, Naivara. Naivara's gigantic. Yeah. Naivara grew in size. She, she had an enlarge casted on her. <laughs> oh, man. Let me put the wagon on here, too. Here we go. Here's, here's your wagon. Enlarge is a really good spell in 5e. Enlarge is a really good spell. Read what it. Is... Know it. Love it. Okay, and I have something to read to you guys. I was just getting set up, so thank you for your patience. Okay, so. Oh, uh. Guys, uh, something was supposed to happen in the forest. I forgot to do that. Let's pretend we're back in the forest. <laughs> so. Remember that thing that happened back in the forest? Yeah, Whoa, yeah so crazy. Crazy. man, we'll flash yeah. back to it. Back in we'll that forest, back about it right now. Back in that forest, uh, uh, when you first entered the woods, this was supposed to be shortly after entering the woods. Sorry, I was so preoccupied with like calculating distance and doing the checks, I completely forgot about the that this encounter. So, okay, um, well, yeah. Oh, so, do you need time to get that set up? No, no, I, I'm ready. Let me just drag you back to the map, and let's just say we're on, on, the, on the woods right here. Um, so you guys have entered into the forest, and about 60 feet ahead of you, a wild boar stands in a small clearing. The boar gate glares at you suspiciously. Uh, I, I, I say, I got this, guys. And I, like, go towards the boar, and um, I want to do... An animal handling check uh, to be like, hey, hey, boar, everything's cool. Uh, my name's Bjorn. I've got some food for you here. And like, do boars eat meat? Yeah, <laughs> pigs eat whatever the. Yeah. They eat everything. Yeah, so I, I pull out. I pull out like just like some like ration scraps or whatever I've oh, got oh, like, in my bag. Yeah. Yep. And I, I, like, put it on the ground and, yeah. like, back away for it. And I, like, I, like, gesture with both of my hands for, 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 like, towards the boar. And I'm like, there you go, buddy. Yeah, make your uh, normal animal handling check and add two more to it just for you pulling out, like, your ration and, like, feeding and trying to feed the boar and stuff like that. All right, animal handling. <clears throat> There's no specific rule that gives you bonuses and stuff like that. A lot of things will give you advantage and everything, but I th I think just adding an extra two for, for being creative and using your ration is okay. So that's 18 total. Yeah, you do so. The board does not react. Huh. Uh... All right, like well, it's, this one it's, beats me, guys. Like, it's not yeah. in your way. You can go around it. It's just staring at you. All right, well, uh, hey, Boar, do you talk? It stares. All right, uh, I think it's just a regular Boar. Nothing magic about it. Let's get out of here. A magic Boar? No, oh, he well, said yeah, it wasn't you know, magic. I mean, there's, there's always some sort of, like, crazy, you know, crap going on in this world. I don't, I don't know. Um, That's true. I, I kind of wanted, wanted a boar friend, you know? I wanted to make friends with the boar, but obviously the boar is not trusting. Uh, maybe he wants food from the rest of you guys. Hey, all of you, bring out a day of food. And, like, everyone, everyone here, put some food where I put my food. Let's try that. 
making a sacrifice to a boar. Right. We, we want a boar for a base. I'll put down one of my base rations. We'll Screw sacrifice it. it. We'll sacrifice it to the dragon, if anything. All right. Mm -hmm. If it's a boar, we don't care. But we'll throw it to the dragon and distract it. If if it's you know if it's a friend, if it's cool, you know if we if it, it which I think you know we'll end up liking it. Then we have a friend. That's a boar that has tusks. All right. All right. Well, I'll try to make friends with your board, and I throw down my rations. Like, mm. is it? Is it? I look down. It does not react. Is it, the only girl? Is, is it our friend yet? <laughs> mm. It looks like it's not our friend yet. Ah, uh, Bjorn, I don't think this this boar wants to be our friend. We I'm tried. gonna. Yeah, that makes me a little sad. But walk a few steps closer to the boar and see what he does. Nothing. Is the boar moving at all? I mean, like, it's breathing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I think we should just leave him alone. Yeah, I think this boar just wants to get left alone. Does the, I, I does think the ox... it's just a wild animal. Yeah. Does the ox seem uneasy Definitely at the sight of this mimic. boar? The ox doesn't react. Okay, <laughs> yeah, then let's just, let's just keep going. All right, well, I want to just say to the boar before we leave, uh, hey, in case you are some sort of sentient boar or some crazy crap like that, um, I just want you to know that you can find us later at uh, Fandolin, at the whatever inn we're staying at. I don't know. There's only, like, one in the place, so you'll find us. And, uh, yeah, let's let's be friends, man. And then I just walk away. Yeah, that's stone hill. Uh, uh, sir. Stonehill. So, Stonehill. yeah, that's Stonehill right. Inn. So it's okay. You brought. I I understand. You 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 weren't able to read the sign again. I can help you with that. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. Chris Rivers is gonna put his hand on Bjorn's shoulder to go. I I just don't think it wants to be friends, buddy. Let's let's get him the cart and head on. So. If if you guys are moving on, is that what everybody's doing? You guys are just moving past the boar and going on? Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh it it watches you. It watches you the entire time you you leave until it's out of your sight. And it doesn't it just follows you with its eyes. Very weird encounter. Okay, well Doc, can you just mark this spot on the map and we'll come back through? Maybe yeah. it has rabies. <laughs> no, no, no. That's that's not what happened. That, I mean, look, there are reports of of shamans that live in the woods that can turn into animals. Was it one of them? Yeah. Was he really socially awkward? Yeah, definitely. He should have turned into not whatever a boar or whatever that was and said hello like a person or elf or whatever magical being, nymph, dryad whimsical centaur we could have eaten him don't don't say that that's that's how you get cursed <laughs> yes yeah, can see, we name him bacon right. at least no, no we're not gonna name him bacon we're just gonna we're gonna leave it alone and be glad it didn't eat us okay because sometimes that happens you go into strange woods things eat you true mm -hmm. yeah that'd be unfortunate wouldn't it yeah we're chasing down a dragon one bite whole person I don't think the boar was cryophane. No, I don't think the boar was cryophane. But, you know, I've heard that dragons can shapeshift into things, so... You know, it's probably best that we just were like, Hey, boar, what's up? Good tidings. And then walked on. Because, you know what, if it is a nymph or a dryad or some sort of shapeshifting creature, it will remember that we were kind to it. Yeah, and didn't eat mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to yeah. call him bacon, though. So you just call him bacon. It's, fine. it's not even so clever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him pork chop. So you guys continue on to loggers camp. Uh, after you revealed gonna... to the boar where you guys will be staying at in the future. Uh, yeah. and just to let you guys know, uh, that that title for that little section was called a boring encounter. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> you know what, wizards. 
<laughs> you know what, you guys? <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna read the 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 loggers camp blurb. Are you guys ready for loggers camp now? <laughs> uh, I see how you forgot about it, Spencer. I mean, like, yeah. So, anyways, uh, <laughs> continue on to the actual quest. Uh, the loggers the logging camp spreads along the south shore of the river, where a dozen tents are arranged on a shady on a sandy beach. I can read. Near a dock stands a cabin with logs stacked under an awning. Older cabins close by have been torn down to leave only stone chimneys and foundations. A grim silence hangs over the camp, and you see no one around. A little too quiet. Can I make a perception check to see if there's anybody maybe like hiding behind some of the wreckage or, absolutely yeah uh you know, we're specifically up out of the ashes uh, are you doing a general search or are you specifically searching somewhere i'm not searching anywhere i'm i'm mm -hmm. just looking around okay um you know any anything shiny in some of the ashes over here yeah if there are some embers on the fire over at this little kind of campsite likewise over here do i see any glows or Anybody may be hiding in one of these or sleeping in some of these tents. I know it's dinner time. Is anybody eating? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, everybody else, arrange yourselves how, how you normally would be in a line down here and such, too. <sighs> I, I like marching order. I don't think we really yeah. walk in a single file line. That's fair. I imagine I'll be, like, at the shoulder of the ox. Yeah. Just kind of walking along. Hanging like out with Vincent. Leading him along. Yeah. Vincent. So, oh, 13. Okay, yeah. Um, Other than it being eerily quiet, it looks like whatever happened, like, things are out and in place. Like, they just left stuff around. Like, it was an active camp, and they just, like, there's pots out there's cooking equipment. Like, the fires have been out for a while, but, like, everything's in place like it would normally be, but it's, like, nobody's there. Is in, uh, is the food inside, like, like I guess I'm going to look inside maybe, oh, well, whatever, other people can go first. Yeah, just to let you know, too, like, the tents down here to the south and closer to the, the river north, they were, like, actively used. Oh. This right here, this, like, uh, like, ruined, like, building or whatever it is that hasn't been touched in a while it doesn't look like it's been touched so did you say there were like fire like ash like spots where there were fires were fires but they've been out for like maybe days okay that's what i was gonna ask is how long they've been out or if yeah, like, you there can't, were still embers you can't tell yeah. from here but it doesn't look like they were lit so there's no smoke no. what time of day is it again uh, it's the it's like six p.m. seven p.m. So the sun's still out, but maybe like lower in the sky. Hmm. It's summer for you guys. It's like July. Hmm. Spencer, I'm also gonna walk like thirty feet. Up yep, right, right there. Side. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, that's as far as I can go in like a turn. Yep. Do you want us to go in turn order, Spencer, or? Uh, no. You guys can go however you want. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not like, oh, I go in and do blah, blah, blah. And do, like, too much. Yep, 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 yep. I have, uh, once everybody's had a chance to say what they're doing, I'm mm -hmm. Yeah, what you else, is, what is everybody else doing, too? Honestly, I'll probably just tag along with Doc Rivers, mm -hmm. you know? Not really, like, like, I'm, like, Bjorn's not, obviously, the brightest in the bunch, and he's not <laughs> the most perceptive either, you know? So he's just, like, kind of, like, in his own world, like, Oh, oh, this is a cool camp. Yep. I like camping. <laughs> I like kind of. Oh, sorry. That's about As, it. Are there, like, tents there still? Uh, where, uh, like, to the south here and to the north here? Yeah, Let the me... tents are up. Can I, like, go? Oh, I see. I see on the map. Um, I'm going to go over and kind of, like, go to these tents over here um and i'm just gonna call out and be Stop. like hey 
as soon as you reach right here. Was anybody else following her? Mm-hmm. Because I'm going to have to have everybody roll initiative. Fuck! Yeah, Whoa. see, this is the kind of thing that I think turn order would be useful because... If 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 we're if we're needing to like keep track of like how far everybody is moving, and like <laughs> moving to a place triggers something, we're kind of lost as to where we're all at at the moment. Yeah, that that that's a good point. That's why I was trying to keep track of where. Yeah, like my my turn speed movement as we came into this place within the mm -hmm. graphs. Um, and now that Navar is like all the way over here, have we done like two rounds worth of movement? And if so, then we should really kind of establish where we're. We can retcon it like that. That's fine. Okay, then we'll stay in turn order from here on out. Okay. No, I meant oh. like as far as positioning goes before combat. Mm -hmm. Should we just assume that we've gotten two rounds worth of movement in before we like twelve seconds passed? Oh. Yeah, so we two turns worth of movement. So that way Novo's not stuck by the cart. Yeah, because the thing is, is like necessarily be right. Novo's really back here, and Navarro's already all the way over here. But I don't really think Christian, if had known that he was supposed to be, I mean, would you normally? I know Christian, you're just being quiet. Would you have stayed here the whole time? I was gonna ask about the surround. Uh, a uh, specific thing about surroundings, so I assume I would, like, go closer to look and see if I could find out about that. So, yeah, I, I, I would be up further, but... Okay. Well, uh, like Justin was saying, Nivara could have reached there or, like, reached right here in two turns. So why don't you guys move two turns of movement closer to where, like, you would be? Oh, Justin, did you roll a net one? I rolled a net one on my initiative. Oh, no. Like, I got distracted by, like, that squirrel. Yeah, right. I rolled I rolled a two on my initiative and got a plus. <laughs> so I rolled a three, so... Being really receptive. Oh, did you see that bunny? Yeah! I'm still oh, thinking about fun. camping, man. I'm like, oh, camping is fun. Uh, fires and marshmallows and some more. <laughs> So, are you guys going to stay back where, like, Ufo and Novo are, or are you going to scoot a little closer, like Doc Rivers is? Uh, I'll, I'll be a little closer. Okay. I think Ufo was probably checking the trail to see if he saw any, like, um, evidence of people, like, leaving the camp in, like, carts mm -hmm. or by foot. Um, any yeah. sort of, like, active, like, prints or signs of movement like in or out of the camp recently yeah well so what happens is you guys are like moving closer to the camp and naivara steps like right where she is right now and bursting out of the ground is a onkat an onkat heg an onk heg oh. it's like this insect kind of like burring creature that sticks its head out and like goes to attack you guys so for for uh for starcraft fans they kind of look like hydralisks yeah with uh with like praying yeah yeah they look a lot like hydralisks actually yeah so it bursts out of the ground and starts going after Nivara. Nivara takes a step forward onto the beach and it bursts out of the ground and she's like ah and then and then initiative starts so actually by initiative order uh, uh, Ufo's gonna go first. Okay, yeah, Ufo, Ufo hears, like, uh, the, like, rumbling and crumbling, like, in the ground as it, like, breaches. Does it make, like, a, a noise at all, or is it... Uh, maybe, like, an insect chirping, like, I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. Like a grasshopper. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, you guys, 60. Okay, Ufo is going to cast a uh, web on top of the creature. All right. Um, so a big mass of, like, sticky webbing kind of, like, spews from his, his hand, like, and arcs over everybody on top of the 
the insect creature. Um, and they... Let's see, you're 20 foot. We'll say about there. Uh, massive webbing. Kind of, like, drapes over it and the surrounding area. Is that as big as the webbing goes? Yeah, it's a 20 feet, uh, cube. Oh, wait, that's oh, 10. Oh, I thought then. it'd be... That's only 10. Yeah. So it'd probably be... Here, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Whoop. It just disappeared for me. Right, because I deleted it. Oh. <laughs> uh, do I want to do it from there? Or do I want to do it? Hmm. Ooh. That. Um. And it needs to make a deck save on its turn or right now right now okay um, um well wait i think actually at the start of its turn oh well i'll each, keep that roll yeah. it rolled a four so <laughs> yeah each creature that starts its turn in the webs or that enters them during its turn must make a deck save and on a failed save the creature is restrained as long as it remains in the webs or until it breaks free okay it's restrained? Yeah. Ooh. That influences what I do next turn. Um, a creature restrained by the webs can use its action to make a strength check against your spell save DC, and if it succeeds, it is no longer restrained. Mm. Uh, the okay. webs are flammable. Mm. And any five-foot cube of the webs exposed to fire... Burns away in one round, dealing 2d4 fire damage to any creature that starts its turn in the fire. Ooh, okay. Mm, that gives me an idea. All right. Was there anything else Ufo can do this turn? Uh, nope, nope. He just, he just shot Webb. Oh! <laughs> Stop right there. All right. Uh, Naivara. It is your turn now. You step forward, and as soon as you got close to the camp, this this Ankeg, uh, Ankeg, Ank, A N K H E G, Ankeg, okay, bursts out and it's like going at you with its mandibles, and then Ufo just goes ah, and shoots webs at it, and it seems to be kind of stuck. We'll see at its turn. Go ahead. So it's like coming at me. Well, trying to. Ufo sprayed web over it. Yeah. Um. Do I know anything about this creature? Uh, right off the bat? I, I mean, you can make a history check, maybe? I will do that. Is that is that alright? Yeah, that's okay. History. Everybody else, just think about what moves they're going to take on their turn. Ashley, don't forget about your bard stuff that lets you add, like, half your proficiency or whatever to your roll. Jack yeah. of all trades! Uh, I know nothing about it. All right. Yeah, it was a four. Yeah, it, it, it's your yeah. This thing is it. You don't know if it's a bug or a demon sent from hell coming to take your soul. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm just gonna be like, ah, what the heck is that? With my six seconds of speech. Yep. Um, <laughs> and I would like to cast. I think. I want to cast Shatter. It's a 60-foot range. Yeah. Each creature in a 10-foot radius sphere centered on that point must make a con saving throw. So I'm going to center it on the creature. You do that. And I need a con saving throw from it. Con saving throw. Mm, rolled kind of high. Let's see. Uh, It got a 16. Uh, it passes, but it's still gonna take, um, half of a 3d8 thunder damage. Roll with that dice, girl. And it's, is it made of stone, crystal, or metal? No. Okay. It's organic. Okay. I mean, you, when you cast the spell, maybe Naivara thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't know what it was <laughs> coming at her. Uh, so, four or five damage, depending four. on what you think. Round it down. Alright, so. four damage. Hey. 
and there's a really loud <laughs> boom. Yeah. You hear it kind of like chitter and you're and it's like stuck in the web and everything. Is that all you're gonna do? Are you gonna back up or anything? Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, you start backing up. And while you're doing that, Novo, it is your turn. I have a question. Yeah. How does um? So technically, the creature is ensnared. Is that the the? It seems to be. It has to make a check on its frame. turn. But I already, I already rolled it, so it looks like it's going to be restrained on its turn. So what happens if I were to cast a spell like Thunder Wave that's supposed to move it? Would it move and still be restrained where it, it moves, or because it moves? Or would it be released from its restraint? I right. would say it would because probably be moved insane. out of the web, yeah. Okay. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> Ideally. Yeah. Um, I'm planning on setting it on fire, honestly. <laughs> I, yeah, no, I don't like that. Um, so I, I too, am um, kind of um, seeing, seeing this happen to Naivara out of nowhere. I, I, you know, I am concerned as well. And um, to kind of match her, her, um, her, her energy um, and try and you know, kind of combat this together, I will cast uh, Shatter as well. <clears throat> so, we'll need a cons... Uh, Another con save. Boom. Save, yeah. <clears throat> Five. It failed. <laughs> okay, think. it definitely failed there, yeah. Three D eight. Oh All man, right. that is thirteen. Ooh. Oh, that um, is some nice thunder damage. damage. Boom. Okay. Oh, yeah. You rolled really well too. Yeah. Okay. It it uh it's still up. It's still okay. It doesn't seem to be bloodied yet, but it has taken a lot of damage. It's like screaming out in pain, like and it's like trying to move its feet. And on its turn, because it rolled a seventeen. Um, it, it fails its, its web check, so it's stuck, but it, 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 uh, it doesn't take the action to break out of it. Instead, it kind of rears up its head, and you just see, like, this, like, spray come out of its mouth. Um, and that's gonna shoot, uh, let's see here. What does the spray look like? It's green. Five, that's disgusting. Ten, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20... 25 30. It's gonna spray in this direction and it hits both Bjorn and uh uh Dr. Rivers. This yeah, is an so acid spray. Yeah. I would like to use a reaction to cast absorb element. Yeah. Uh it, it, that, that can be acid damage too, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Go ahead and do that. Um but uh, you do uh have to make a DC 13 dexterity saving throw. Both of you. Uh, I just revealed the DC. I wasn't supposed to do that. But make a dexterity saving throw! Oh, no. <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, Alright. Dex check. Dex Fail. check. Alright, you take half as much damage on the total roll. Uh, how much do I, how much do I take? Uh, so... It's nine acid damage in total. So if you failed it, you take nine acid damage. But Dan, you're casting Absorb Elements. So what, is, what does that uh, do, Dan? So yeah, last for one round. Let me read it. The spell captures some of the incoming energy on you and storing it for your next melee attack. Uh, you have resistance to the triggering damage until the start of your next turn. Also, the first time you hit with a melee attack on your next turn, the target takes an extra 1d6 of the triggering type. And the spell ends. Uh, so, go ahead and make that dexterity save. And I did. I oh, failed. You, you failed. Okay. Well, you take just half damage still, so it's going to be four acid damage. Six. And and yeah, and you get all the other benefits from the absorb elements and stuff. So. Oh, that's super cool. But that's its turn, and Bjorn, you're up next. 
So yeah, Bjorn, so I was gonna look, oh, yeah, wait, I, sorry. Before you that? take your turn, I want you to to understand like what it means for it to be restrained, because there are yeah, some, right. some some benefits for it to stay restrained and not just like oh, light absolutely. it light it on, on fire. fire. Yeah, yeah. So while it's restrained, you're gonna have uh, advantage um, on attack rolls, I believe. Say no uh, more, bro. Yeah, attack rolls <laughs> against the creature have advantage, and the creature's attack rolls have disadvantage. And it also has disadvantage on all deck saving throws while it's restrained. So maybe don't don't light the web on fire just yet and let it kind of stay. Yeah, no, I, I got you. I got you. I'm gonna. Can I hit it from here? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's 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 like a large creature. Yeah, it's a large monstrosity, so you can hit it from there. Okay. So just a reminder, I get to do an extra one d six of acid. Plus, I'm gonna shellac it right now. Yeah, I'm going to move you up just a little bit so you're in the square. There we go. Yeah. When I hit my level 4 spike, I dumped it into con instead of strength, so uh, I got all of that back health, and let me tell you, Ooh, tasty. That's tasty. Ooh. Oh, um, yeah. Con is yeah, always yeah. nice. Your boy might have 46 health at level 4, which is really nice. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I can't even think. Um, so it's proficiency bonus plus strength. Okay, got it. And then, you know what? Just because we get advantage as well. Yeah, roll it. Even better, 23. Yeah, that hits. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What? Yeah. <laughs> 23. 23 hits. Uh, okay. You don't add in strength to... Oh, yeah, you do add in strength to the damage, right? Yeah. Yeah. You just don't add your proficiency with it. But you do have acid damage. Oh, uh, it's not a one or a two. Okay, so I did ten total. Nice, and that's including your acid and stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I rolled bad on the d12. I rolled a okay. three, though, so it wasn't a one or a two, so I couldn't use great weapon fighting to reroll. Yeah, it mm. is is definitely bloody. Let me see if it is critical. It's not well, critical, you're... but it is bloodied. How often can you do the acid thing, Dan? Uh, is it just, one? I just just added, yeah, basically I absorbed it, like, and element, you pushed and it I back. used it back at it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah, it's awesome. So that that, that is thing. really cool. Okay. Well, was there anything else you can do on your turn, BLR? No, I that that's my turn. I end it. All right. And now, Doctor Rivers, you see before you an entangled on on keg on God dang it. <laughs> A honk egg is stuck in this webbing with Bjorn chopping at it with acid damage, and your other party members is doing stuff. What do you do? <laughs> He sits there silently, yeah. menacingly. Uh, Justin. Justin, <laughs> Justin, do you hear us? Yo, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I had it's a little weird, weird device. Yeah. All right. Well, that's cool. But so, um, I am going to. Is he critical or is he just bloodied? He's bloodied. He's he's looking hurt. Okay, cool. Well then, he's got green blood coming out of his different mandibles. Level. Ooh, gross. Sweet. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna use uh first level spell. I'm gonna cast guiding bolt. Perfect. All right. Um, oh, that's a cool one. And roll the twenty seven, and that probably hits. But I'm gonna roll. D20 plus 7 because I get advantage on attacks. All right. All right. Well, that definitely hits, right? And this is a to hit. spell attack. Was the webbing, was that only for like no, it's melee just, attacks? I, it's just attacks. I can read the text. Okay, cool. Uh, just making sure. Yeah. A, re it's, a it's restrained res creature has uh, attack rolls against the creature have advantage. And this cool. Is a spell just making roll. sure. Yeah, because like, you know, really prone cool. is, is like that special case where like ranged, it can be different. So I was just making sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. For sure. 
but the 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 verbiage on it's pretty broad so i since it's a ranged spell attack i mm -hmm. thought it was under the umbrella okay um, perfect no that's okay so yeah 24 hits <laughs> sweet um and then that will be and then this is radiant damage so i don't think it should affect the um webbing no mm. ah poopy damage well yeah, 13 radiant fun fact it had 12 health left so how does it die justin oh yeah so this this um my my um I raise, I, I extend the cudgel, um, and it, like, boots out, it seems to extend in a, and, like, form into light, and it just, um, like, whips back and forth and down, and, um, like, just right on the back, and you just hear a crack, and the thing just kind of falls away. Oh, yeah. Um, this, on uh, onk egg uh is like half its body out of the ground just like slumped over forward the other half still underground and um we're gonna stay in turn order because it sounds like that'd be better for exploring this this area and everything to keep things ordered um but uh yeah currently there are no other enemies on the board so there could be more there could be not i guess we'll have to find out but let's go back to the beginning of turn order with ufo yeah oh Actually, since combat's over and it's about halfway through, can we take a, a quick break? Is sure. that okay? Cool, let's take a quick break. We'll return. The party has just killed a Ongheg that was burrowed, bur burrowed underground at this loggers camp. Could this be why the loggers camp is empty? Who knows? Find out after the break when we come back. See you in five minutes, everyone. Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to the ABCs of RPGs, where we teach you the basics of tabletop role-playing games. You are now joining the party in the middle of the Essentials Kid adventure called the Dragon of Icefire Peak. Currently, they're doing the quest called Logger's Camp, which uh, they entered, uh, traveled through the Neverwinter Forest to come across this barren camp. Things seem to have just, like, disappear all at once. Nobody's around or anything like that. But as soon as they stepped a little bit further into the camp, boom! A Ankheg burst out of the uh, ground and started attacking the party, which they quickly dispensed of. So now we rejoin the party after slaying one of the Ankhegs. Uh, and uh, yeah, they we're keeping in turn order, and now they can kind of uh, explore more of the camp. Which now, gonna throw it back to Ufo. It's back to you. All right, cool. Uh, Ufo had never actually cast web all the way before, so the first thing he's going to do is he's going to dash up and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And so he dashed up to the web, and he goes, and yep. he's standing next to Bjorn, and he just kind of, like, pokes the web a little bit, um, and that's going to be his turn. <laughs> he pokes the web. Before, okay, um, cool. dropping concentration on the web, and it kind of fizzles away. All right, Naivarov, what are you doing? I'm going to use my six seconds of speech to call out and be like, it, is it dead? And then i um, going to kind of go up by UFO. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Um... I'm a little bit more relaxed about the six seconds of speech since, like, we're out of combat and stuff, so don't worry too much about that. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're doing turn order, but really this can be stretched out a bit further, you know? Right. So, Novo. So, yeah. Yep, go ahead, sorry. That's, that's it, that's it. Novo! Can't hear you, boss. You're muted! Sorry. Um, yeah. So I was curious coming in um, if I'll move up here just a little, little bit. Um, if there was any signs of um, there wasn't any any signs of uh, water, any puddles or anything like that. Uh, mm. Any any other holes maybe? Um, that's what 
other creatures like this could have come through. I want like that. I want you to give me an intelligence <sighs> check with investigation if you have that proficiency. Yeah. Um. Cool. Let's do that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm on the right page already. It's like looking for a pencil and it's on your ear. <laughs> or you're like you're like looking for your phone and it's in your hand. You're like, where did my phone go? Yeah. <laughs> Twenty three. Nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, you you can tell immediately. Like, oh, like. These onkegs, when, when they burrow back into the ground, the sand just pulls back in. So, like, whenever they went under the ground, the, the sand covered it. Like, the sand is so malleable that, like, if they dug a bunch of holes here, they just sunk in. So you can probably, like, be like, oh, they killed all the, 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 the lockers, and they dragged them underground, and all the holes are gone because it's sand. So that's what happened. Okay. Um... Interesting. All right. Do you tell the party that? <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, I, I guess I, I kind of... They're not yeah. very far from me. I'm going to just yeah. uh, yell out and say, Hey, so it seems that when, when these creatures uh, grab their prey their victims and pull them under the sand um they really leave no no mark no trace of where they may be i would be careful and tread lightly as we go further into uh the the logging camp here because they could be just beneath the surface mm -hmm. yeah the sand leaves no traces of them hmm. and if that's your turn then we're going to move on to bjorn yeah. Good deal. Um. Yeah. So I'm. I'm gonna just. I guess like walk. Like, to here. Yeah. And poke it, and that's my turn. Cool. It doesn't move. You like you poke you poke one of its like you know like legs, and it just. Yep. Like maybe make a hole and green ooze mm -hmm. flows out of it. Uh, Doctor Rivers. Okay. Um, you can hear me, right? Yep. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. I am going to five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Can I? That's all I can do, like in one turn. But I kind of wanted to look over here and i wanted to look and see if there was because you said there were like pots on fire like on the fire so like where the fires yeah. were yeah where they were is there like are is the food like all moldy or is yes yeah. well okay. i mean like no not moldy not moldy like if you if you take the time to inspect it uh it's it's probably been like it's been out for a couple of days so it's covered in flies and stuff you know Okay, like well, covered in maggots, but not well. It is some of it's a little gross. Okay, but then yeah. it's like pretty gross. So like, but it's not like devoid of food. Like, right. there's nothing left in there. It's all been eaten out. Okay. Yeah. So this kind of just happened. Maybe mm -hmm. these insect creatures just showed up. Be careful. Um. Wait a second. Hold on. Let me see if we can't. Oh, shoot. I can't really make weapons as far away. Ufo. Ufo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can, you sh can you shoot a, uh, uh, like, can you make a firework go over there? Just kind of, like, shoot it in the middle of that? I just need it to, like, kind of bang more than I need it to flash. Oh, you want to try to, like, lure one out of the ground? I think so, yeah. Okay. I could try I could try to make that happen. Uh see if they react to sound kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. And it is your turn. So Okay. Uh yeah, I say yeah, yeah, I'll try that, but if if, if it doesn't happen, maybe somebody should maybe uh look inside these tents, see if uh anything was like left behind, like if people 
left or they're all <laughs> beneath us in the sand. As I'm saying this, as I'm like setting up the firework and aiming it over there. Um, and I, I, I light it and the firework pop and like pops above, uh, the, the fire over there, like close down to the ground. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's probably the shape of, uh, a, uh, like a, 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 a sexy one of these things, uh, on keg. A, like a, 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 a like it's got a like a bikini on or yeah i want i want it to like be to seem like a uh i want the the male on kegs to really like be 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 wanting to find it yeah uh, so you you shoot it over there and it explodes and uh nothing nothing really pops out of the sand over there okay. like maybe you wait like you know like a couple like 10 15 seconds but nothing really happens so okay. Uh, let's, we're going back around to Novo. Hmm. Um, so up to the northwest. Yeah. Um. Over here. Yeah. Is yeah. this a building that's totally enclosed, I assume? Yes. Yes, it is. So there, uh, I'll, I can read it. Uh, let's see here. Near a dock stands a cabin with logs stacked under an awning. Uh, and then, yeah, that's what that is. And then it says near it, there's, so these spaces right here where it's over the grass and everything, those are, uh, older cabins close by have been torn down to leave only stone chimneys and foundations. So, yep. Okay. Um, after of realizing, like, fully the, how dangerous it is for us to trek further into the, on, on the sand. Mm -hmm. Um, and seeing like the, the remains of just food and, um, you know, this camp installment, yep. I'm, I'm going to actually trek. So I just have 30 feet of movement here, right? Yeah. So I mean, you can take an act with a dash, but yeah, 30, that's fair. If you're running, you're like, ah! 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to see what I can uh, eventually try and uh, see what I can um, uncover within this this building. Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right, Bjorn, it's your turn. You see Novo, like, run over, like, just dash over to this, this cabin over here. So, yeah. The sandworms uh, are coming. The sandworms. Uh, <laughs> Getting Dune uh, no, flashbacks. I don't know why I'm going with you because I, you know, yeah. it's fine. All right, let's go. And, and he, didn't, he didn't really mean it. He's just still really upset about what you said about the book thing earlier. <laughs> <laughs> He's just still really upset. <laughs> uh, that's my turn. All right, and before we go to Dr. Rivers, uh, Naivara, we did skip you, but it, it, it's back to your turn. Uh, Novo and Bjorn have ran, they're starting to run to this cabin over here. Uh, they're kind of getting off the sand and everything like that. Uh, uh, Novo kind of saw that, like, they can just, like, the on kegs can, can just disappear under the sand without any trace. So Novo's running over to the cabin, so. We got some tremors going on. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, Ufo and or, or Doc Rivers had the idea for Ufo to shoot a firework um, up north to see if that oh, like that's a good idea. if that attracts one out of the ground. Yeah, but nothing happened. Nothing's happened yet. Mm -hmm. Good vibrations. It was a sex scene. <laughs> yeah. Good uh, vibrations. Um. Cool. Oh, it's my turn. So, no, it's Nivar's oh, turn. No, no. Oh, my bad. My bad. Five. Ten. Like 15, 20, 25, 30. Do I see anything around me? Oh, so are you are you gonna investigate this area? I am. Okay, yeah. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. are you searching anything specific? Or are you doing a general search? I wanted to search like this fire pit ring here. Yeah, yeah. Go... Like there were like charred logs and stuff here. Yeah, like like this over here, this chimney. Um, I was actually going right here. Oh, right, right there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there's not charred logs here. There's like remnants of a log cabin and stuff like that. So there's just remnants like right here. 
can I go search this? Is that too far for no, no. movement? Like, uh, how, how much movement do you have? I guess I could dash over here. Is that fine? Yeah, uh, you won't be able to search everything in the same turn. That's fine. I'll I dash over here um, with the You're rest of my movement, it. and I'm cool. going to search more when it comes back to me. Sure, yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, back to Ufo. Okay, yeah. Um, still don't notice anything up top. Wait. Up north. Oh, oh I'm sorry. That. I'm sorry. I forgot. I forgot our wonderful, brilliant he healer. Our our good, loyal Saint Cuthbert no worshiper. Yeah. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm actually just gonna dash over here. My my turn's pretty quick. I'm gonna dash okay. over here, and I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna try and hide behind. Like I'm gonna go over and um, crouch run. If that makes sense. Um. Uh, over behind this that cart, yeah. and if I can make a perception check at the house, I'd like to make a perception check at the house, it's like hiding behind the cart. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and roll that perception check for me. And while you're rolling that, Ufo, go ahead and start your turn. Yeah, um, Ufo wants to nice. get a look at um... An unnatural here. 20. Perfect. Uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Uh, searching 10, that that 30. kind of like yeah, well, just like everything else, it was just like it looked like it was being pulled by someone, but then it just got dropped. And this is like a barrel full of like water that it was like fresh water that he's probably transporting to like was being transported to like the other workers, but it, it just got left there. So, um, anyway, sorry, go Ufo. I think Doc was more making a perception check at the building than the cart oh. he was hiding behind. Was it the building? Oh yeah, I was taking a look at the building. I didn't think oh, I fully okay. inside the cart. So I sorry, I, 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 I run, 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 run. I confuse then, you like, taking cover I like, for. I like, I like, I like peek up above over. <laughs> yeah, um, you can't see too much inside. It seems like the the window, like there's only this window. Uh, maybe I, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting your turn, Ufo. <laughs> Uh, but maybe you see, like, that. You see, like, maybe some, like, logging equipment in there, but you can't really make out anything else, so. Okay. All right. Cool, cool. Go ahead, Dalton. Sorry. All right. So I was back there, and I just want to, like, do a pass at, like, a couple of the tents to see uh, what kind of supplies I can find, if any were, if anything was, like, left behind in them, or if it seems like people, like, took stuff and run. Yeah, um... It it looks like everything was left as is. Mm -hmm. Like like beds are still in place, blankets. Like maybe a few of them are like thrown on the floor. Like there was like a quick get up, but nobody was grabbing stuff and leaving. So okay, okay, I'll take that as like an investigation, and pass the turn to Nivara. I'm gonna investigate that like chimney thing. All right. Uh, actually, you find, uh, searching the chimney, a totem buried in debris. It's, uh, 13 tiny androgynous stick figures, which appear to be dipped in bl pig's blood. Oh my god. And inscribed with tiny lightning Are... bolt symbols and tied to get together with a, uh, tied together in a bundle with hair. You, oh, you can sweet. make a religion check if you like. Um, sure. Yeah, I will attempt that. Uh, Not that I'm very good at religion. Well, you can bring it to your cleric. Yeah, where is my cleric? He's right, right behind you. you. <laughs> where is well, he? Like, oh, right. I'm right, right here. I'm right behind I'm gonna, you. like, pick it up, like, with just two fingers by, like, the hair bundle, I guess. Oh. Yeah. And I'm gonna hold it out in front of me, and I'm gonna be like, Doc, Doc, what is this? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna come over to Doc, and I'm just gonna hold it out for him to take it from me on his turn. I'm just gonna be like, Doc, it's gross. Cool. All right, cool. So there it is. Uh, I'll just place it right here for you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, so Nivra hands Doc the totem, and it is now Novo's turn. Can I see through these windows here? They, to my uh, Which, 
So like this window? Um, uh, no, just this one. So that is a door. Oh, that's I know a that's door. a little confusing, oh, but yeah. Okay. No. Oh wait, no, uh, that is yeah. a window. That's a window. This is oh. a door. <laughs> I'm sorry. A lot of doors. No, no, you can yeah. doors. Let you can you can see you can see in here. Let me let me reveal that. Boom! You can see in there. It appears just to be like logging equipment and stuff like that. There's another door to the north up here, and then like yeah, that's that's what you see. Gotcha. Um. Hmm. And. Yeah, I, guess, I mean, I guess I could just... At, after, yeah, at that point, is this just, like, passive perception type thing? If I'm looking through the, the window, how would you... Like, could I just dash afterwards, too? Or how how would you... I would like, say what? that's probably your action, looking, like, okay. investigating, okay. like, inside and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. All right. We're good, then. All right, Bjorn! All right. Um... So, I'm just going to walk in here. Okay, well, <laughs> uh, right. as soon as you walk in, bursting out of the ground is yet another onk. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, let's re-roll initiative, since this is a new round of combat. So, can everybody re-roll initiative for me? I did the I thing we did. Should we finish out the current round before we reroll? Oh, yeah. So, yes, because that would be depriving you, Doc Rivers, of something. So, yes. everybody roll initiative, but Doc Rivers, you still get to go. So. Cool. Um, question. Can I cast um, guidance on myself and make the religion yeah. check in the same turn? Yeah, go ahead. Cool. Okay. Um, I'm going to cast Guidance on myself, and then make a Religion check. Ah, boo! That rolled so poopy all day. Mm, yep. Yeah. Ah, uh, <laughs> you you can't you can't tell what it is. <laughs> it's it, I mean you you recognize it's a it's a totem. It's heresy. <laughs> yeah. So whatever you whatever you want to yeah, do. I look, I look at Navar. I look at Navar. I look back down. I go. That's heresy. I drop it. <laughs> Ashley, that didn't come through. I heard you in the other room. <laughs> no, I don't want to pick it back up. <laughs> Actually, you know what I do? I put it. I put it. I put it. I have. A, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna put it in like a side pocket on my bag and be like, I'm gonna destroy this later with 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 Saint Cuthbert's blessings. <laughs> Holy! Right now, Destroy it later. Okay. All right. Um. Uh. Ufa, what did you roll? Uh, seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Nivara. Six. I put okay. it in. Okay. Good. Uh, Novo. Four. All right, Bjorn. I got a seven. Seven. Okay. And then Doc, what is also what is your seven. roll? No, also seven. <laughs> also seven. I have zero decks. Okay. Man, lots of sevens going on here. Uh, who's faster? Who's whose decks is higher? Doctor Rivers or Bjorn's? Bjorn's. Bjorn's. Okay. All right. Uh, is it, it because is... Bjorn is little? Is that why he's more dexterous? No. Nah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, uh, Bjorn's like in good shape. Doc's old. <laughs> That's why. It's the arthritis. It's the arthritis. <laughs> arthritis. I don't have my bitter tea in my joints. Hurt. All right, Ufo, it's your turn. Let's go. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming that Bjorn let out some sort of girlish shriek hey! when he saw the thing. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to come, come running. Thirty five, forty, forty five, fifty, fifty five, sixty. Um, and I don't. Mm. Oh, that that isn't accurate. <laughs> oh, I'm not doing. I'm not trying to see the the range. Oh, I'm trying you're to see if you have yeah. if a straight line gives me line of sight through the doorway at it. The door 
doors open, I would say yeah. <laughs> Oh, All right, man. So, through there the door. Mama. I yeah. like it. He didn't take spell sniper, but oh, man. Uh, oh, man. he's gonna toss a fire bolt uh, through the door. Try to try to throw it right through the door. Does a fifteen hit it? Uh, I think it does. Uh, yes, yes, it does. Cool, and he's gonna roll a d10 for eight fire damage. Bjorn oh, sees, right. sees a little, a little like uh, that's, that's some good fire damage. Yeah, a little sparkler like fling through the doorway and and nail the the beast in, it, in its little like weird bug maw. Okay, all right, you do so. It takes some of that fire damage and it squeals in pain, but it still looks ready to go. And uh, Bjorn, it is your turn. I want you guys to take a guess. At Slack him? Mm, you'd be right. <laughs> Sick. Did seven to hit? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That does not hit. Maybe maybe Orn was a little bit surprised. It burst out of the ground inside this long cabin at him. So he's like, oh, and whatnot. Oh. So, yep. Uh, is there anything else Bjorn can do? I can use an action surge. Are you going to? I'm going to. Okay. Wow. Wow. This thing has upset me. <laughs> I don't like it. How about a 16? That hits! Wow. Ufo's 15 hits, so 16 what? hits too. <laughs> Sick, a 3. All so right. Six, I mean, six. Sorry. Six. Six slashing damage at it. Uh, yeah. Cool. It's it's still up, but it it kind of goes ah, and it and it and it takes it 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 uh takes some of that damage. So, uh, Doctor Rivers. Oh wait, was there anything else you can do, Bjorn? I'm sorry. No, you're good. Okay, go ahead, Doctor Rivers. So Doc Rivers hears this ruckus. Yeah. Over there, and having just Try to put it away for later, took it as a sign from St. Cuthbert as to the evil of this object, and throws it on the ground and casts um, Sacred Flame upon it. Ooh. So I'm guessing it fails its... Yeah, yes. absolutely. <laughs> I actually do think that's a rule that objects automatically fail dex saves. Yeah. They can't exactly dodge out of the way. No. <laughs> ah, boo. Oh, so two, two, two holy damage? damage? Yeah. Two radiant damage. Radiant, okay, cool. Yeah, it, it, you know, radiant damage isn't, like, supposed to light things on fire, but this light's on fire. Oh, <laughs> it, like, yeah. bursts into flames, and you hear kind of, like, a screeching from inside of the totem. Like, it, whatever this was, did not like that. And, it was heresy. Yeah, and it, and it, yes. like, it, like, burns up. Like, you didn't do a whole lot of damage, but it burns up, so... Um, and with that, it's now the Ankeg's turn, and surprisingly, so Bjorn and Novo, you have a direct line of sight at it, and you see it, like, take this damage, and, like, you know, it looked like it was about to attack Bjorn, but all of a sudden it just kind of, like, stiffens up, and it shakes its, like, insect-like head, and it, like, just starts burrowing down, and it burrows underground. Huh. Well, I'm not going to question that. And with that, um, it's Nivara's turn. I am also wow. going to cast Firebolt at the weird totem <laughs> <laughs> and see what that does for us. Uh, just to let you know, it's, 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 I mean, you can still do that. It is like burnt up. And like oh, destroyed, it seems. It's yeah. Already, yeah. I, I, oh, it's I unnecessary. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's already destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. I hit it with. Some I like that you just like enraged <laughs> and just lashing <laughs> out at it anyway because of you had to touch the hair. Ooh. It's yeah. so gross, Novo. Um. Then instead, since it's already burnt up, I'm gonna search this cart. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, it, it just has, like, a barrel of water on it, and it seems unattended. Like, that's all that's on there. Uh, can I move more? Yeah, of course. 15, 20, 25. This is 30-ish feet. Yeah. I guess that's my turn. All right. Okay, all right. Uh, with that, it's now Novo's turn. I thought you were going to say, with that, an Onkag pops out in front of you from the bush. No. From the bush. <laughs> All right. Um. Hmm. I guess I will go in and, uh... See here. How, uh, that's what we say, like ten foot feet of movement if you climb through the window. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm gonna come in and uh, come around to Bjorn. So 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 here, just to see more of the more of the the room and yep. uh, feel like Bjorn. We are mighty. We don't need the others. <laughs> <laughs> the Onkex burrows away, and you're just like, "Yeah, we did it!" All right, let's tell them. Let's tell them. Listen, that we killed it, and that we threw it. We dug a hole, and then we threw it down the hole. No, <laughs> oh, no, no, never mind. Let's not do that. that that's stupid. Let's just, let's just, let's just get out. What, of it. Let's get what out do of we it. say? We both thunder waved at the same time, <laughs> and we oh. <laughs> we pushed it back down, and then the hole it came. <laughs> and and while you guys are talking inside the building, you hear a voice from up here. Uh, hold on. From up here at this door, you hear you hear a huh, huh, did you, hello. Is it? Is someone there? Uh, oh, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, if, if I have time to get over there, I'll go over to where the device came from and said, yes, hello. Yeah, yeah, we're here. What, what's up? Oh, uh, is, uh, uh, are, did you, uh, did you fight anything out there? Are you, are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, we killed a bug thing. It's gone, I think. It's a really close call. You know, we're quite literally the heroes in this situation. Um, I, I, I believe we deserve to be rewarded. For I, this. I'm, I'm, I'm. Wait, are, are you saying that there's no more, no more of those things out there? You got well, it. Uh, it kind of, it kind of burrowed down back under. But I, wait, I don't know. It's still there. Shh, Bjorn. <laughs> uh, I, I start speaking to Bjorn and dw Dwarvish, <laughs> Dwarven. Um, it's like, dude, be quiet. We're good. <laughs> just trust, just trust. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, by the way, if anybody else wants to go inside the log cabin now, you 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 can. Is anybody else moving inside there? Uh, I can move on to oh, Ufo's yeah. turn. I will as well. Okay, is Ufo joining inside the cabin, or you? Or do you want to keep in order? Uh, I wanted to just get a quick look. I wanted to get a look at the idol. Yeah. Um, and can I do just a, a once over on it to see if I get any? Any idea about its magical or religious properties? I, I whatever you want me to do, whether that's you like investigation do... or arcana or religion. It's gonna be religion, religion. but let me okay. tell you, it's gonna be very difficult because it burned up. <laughs> I, it burned up, but like I saw it burn up. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got a fifteen. Mm. Uh, with the remains that's there, and yeah, I mean, you can't really make anything of it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, back inside the log cabin, uh, uh, this person inside goes, well, if if it just burrowed down, I'm not coming out. Is anybody else out there? Like, are, are my men still alive? Uh, your men? Yeah. We uh, I look around inside. 
there's like there should be like 20 of them there's yeah, nobody my, here my guess is gonna be a big no oh dang it i knew digging that hole in the back was a bad idea a hole in the back I, I you didn't hear that there's nothing back there there's definitely not a uh, hole on the side of the cat uh, side of the hill hey oh okay all right cool hole on the side of the hill yep yep that's where we'll go then okay no don't do that wait 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 why are you here why, why did you guys come here oh um because we got this instruction to come out to you and hold on we're oh we brought you supplies <laughs> Su supplies yeah, we brought you supplies wait from, did, did harbin we're looking for you? Fandolin, we're looking for harbin western no uh, harbin he should be back at Fandolin. Uh, harbin's my brother oh yeah we came here from him to you oh okay uh well sometimes names are hard you can you can leave the supplies out outside i'll, I'll get it when i can okay so you you, you want to tell me anything more about that hole that you didn't dig that's not on the west side of the hill? No, nope, don't. Just don't go there. Don't go. It's it's cursed. Don't do it. Don't, so, don't do it. If you have, like, a clipboard or something, I'll sign it under the door. Just slip it underneath. Uh, so well, I, you, know, you you owe us 100 gold. So just, I, did Harbin say pay. I would pay you? Ufo, yeah. Ufo's Ufo's my like, brother Tyvin Wester, yeah. Yeah, Uf yeah. Ufo is busy like poking at like soot and he yells in, he's like, No, Barthen was gonna pay us if we bring him back the signature. Mm. Okay, well here's the clipboard then. <laughs> uh, so well, you, I just well, found I just found this clipboard <laughs> over here in the ox cart. Yep, I see what you're saying now. Yep. Could you so find this? You slide it under the door. Mm -hmm. You hear like some like rough movement of like maybe a desk moving. And you hear sh like scribbling, and then shooting back out from under the door is the clipboard signed um, Tybor Wester. Okay, sweet. <laughs> Here, Ufo, you should take care of this because. <laughs> and what you just like frisbee toss it out the door at me, He's like way thirty feet away. Cross. Wait, how far are you? You're oh, I'll give this to Ufo when he gets over here. <laughs> It'll be safe then. Uh, while all this is happening, I say to uh, Tybor, uh, well, after he signs it, I'm like, hey, uh, are you just as uh, afraid as your brother is of, like, everything? What? No! I mean, I'm just, those things obviously killed all my men! I him off and I go, DRAGON! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. You hear scuttling away from the door. I That's smack all. Bjorn and I'm like, you're so mean! Yeah, that's all I needed there. That that was. I I got I got what I wanted out of that out of that. All moment. right, you have his signature to complete the quest. Uh, he told you about a hole somewhere. What are all you right. guys doing? I want to talk to Tybor more. I, I want to ask, a, is it a him or a her? Him. Him. Um. Wh when did all this start with? The bug things. Like, uh, two days ago or so. It, he, his voice is faint and across the room. What happened? It just came from underground. I don't know what you mean. Why is there a weird totem in the chimney in the burnt down log next door? A totem? What? What do Why? you mean? What totem? What did it look like? Thirteen androgynous stick figures wrapped in human hair and dipped in pig's blood. No. Oh, no. Pig's blood? Pig's? Pig's blood? Oh, God. It's those anchorites. Anchorites of Talos. They're, they curse the camp! What? What? He Can just starts... elaborate? No, he starts screaming and crying. So, oh. so, wait, wait, wait. Wait, I, there, uh, there, I broke that curse. There, 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 my, there are multiple entities like you, like we said, a totem with like a curse, and like, like this isn't the first thing that pops in your mind. Like, there's other things that could be going on right now. 
uh, but yeah, um, any- If it makes you feel better, we burnt it! He- he doesn't really communicate back. At this point, Bjorn scared him. <laughs> You you start you re, you told him about the totem and he seems to just divulge into crying and 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 he he he's not he's not opening the door or anything so but he did wow. yell out to you that something about anchorites of Talos and such so okay. Ufo I think well. you're uh... <laughs> sorry Ashley what were you oh I was just gonna kind of end my conversation with turning to the party and be like well. I I think I might have made it worse. Mm -hmm. Ufa, what were you gonna do or say? Or oh, I have no idea. Did I did I hear him mention the anchorites of Talos? He screamed pretty loud. Okay, what kind of uh, check should I do to see if I know anything about the anchorites of Talos? What do you uh, want me to do? History? You can do religion. Religion. Or okay. Yeah. I'll do religion then. Can I can I think with um Yep. So cool. So you that means I think you get to use my I have a plus three to it. I don't know if yours is higher. I have plus four. Okay, we'll use your thing then. But advantage. Uh no. oh. uh twelve. Okay. Well, you don't know who these anchorites are, but you know Talos. He he's a deity, a Faerun deity of storms and destruction. Not bugs. Nope. Oh, weird. Um, can I go through this back door here? Uh, I I, I, that's a window, but you can't climb through it. <laughs> oh, this is a window. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, Doc Rivers is gonna be socially awkward about this and like take a look through the window. What does he yeah. see? I guess. Uh, real quick, do we want to stay in turn order or do we want to kind of oh, open? Oh yeah, because because combat's over, essentially. Bjorn's up though. Uh, so uh, if we're if we're going in turn order, it is Ufo's turn. I mean, I just did the um, religion check. Okay, so uh, Bjorn. Not, yeah, and I, I walked a little bit closer. Yeah. Uh, and I end my turn. Cool. All right. Now, Dr. Rivers, you go up to that. Uh, yeah. You looking out the back window, you mm -hmm. see that there appears to be. <laughs> Uh, like a freshly dug kind of like tunnel in this hill over here. At least it's not a grave. Yep. Oh, uh, I, that tunnel he was talking about is right here. And I open up the window and I go through the window. You do so. Before we leave, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna like elbow Novo and I'm like, have you, have you heard about these anchorites of Talos with your lore college stuff? Christian, thinking to yourself. You haven't heard of the Anchorites. It might be more of a local local thing or or uh, problem. You think maybe if you ask uh, uh, what's her what's her face back back at the uh, the miners exchange, uh, Halia back at the miners oh, yeah. exchange, she yeah. might know more information about the local entities running about. Um, I don't. Recall reading about them, but uh, it could be something local to this area that I have not studied. Um, maybe Halia, back at the, the Miners Exchange, will be able to help me once more. <clears throat> Sounds good, smarty pants. And then I kind of like affectionately smack him on the back of the head as I follow Doc Rivers out the window. Okay. Uh, Doc Rivers, is that as far as you could go where you moved yourself? I don't know. I mean, honestly, like I'm like going through a window in chainmail, so I don't know what the rules. Are. I, we were rolling ten I feet. I didn't move bit. very far. We were saying ten feet. So okay. All right. Well, then I guess I'll get up to the cave, and then um, I'll uh, ping Peek my mace on my heel and cast light on my mace. Yeah. Um. Uh, so you, because you get right up to. The cave entrance, I'm going to reveal what's inside. Okay. 
Uh, so let wow. me move this to... Wow. Boom! Oh, oh, that didn't do what I wanted it to. Okay, all right. All right, thank you. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, wow. back. There we go, that's it. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Sorry, layers got mixed up. Okay, so inside of that cave, um, dozens of gems lie strewn upon the floor. Amid the treasure stands a marble statue with its hands clasped in front of it. A placard at the statue's base reads, Only one treasure may leave this room. Cross with another and find your tomb. And with that, let's go on to Nivara. I'll type that up. Don't worry, I'll type that up. What's this? Sorry, what? Uh, I was typing it up. What's this that I'm pinging? It looks like a hedge. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's just a hedge. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, is this the door that I'm not allowed in that mm -hmm. Tybor's behind? Yes. That is the super locked and barricaded door. Uh, I'll use all my movement to come over by Doc. And then when I see the inscription, I'll elbow Doc and I'm gonna like, Looks like we can just take one. <laughs> um, wait a second. Do you second. think we can go in and out taking one at a time? Nope. <laughs> Bummer. Nope. Mm -mm. Don't How do that. will they know? No one's gonna know. They're not gonna know. No, they're not. They'll know. Look, this is magic. They're not gonna know. The inscription says, "Don't do it." Mm. You really shouldn't do it. Don't test magic. There's like no rules. I'm a poor bard. And if a god wants to just smite you, you will get smoked. <laughs> I don't even... I'm mm. just saying I've never been smote. All right, we're stretching. I know, but that's because you haven't crossed gods before. Be oh. glad. <gasps> no, no though. Don't be mad. It is your turn. Yeah. <laughs> 10, 15, 20... I think I'll dash uh, to get right, right up my... there. Oops. Yeah. Yep. You do so. Um, and we have this room. Awesome. Um, and I'll end my turn. Cool. All right, Ufo. Yorn, did you take out that that thing all by yourself in there? No. No, it burrowed back down. <laughs> you think we have to be worried about it, or did it look pretty scared running away? No, it, it. I mean, I I hit it with my axe. Yeah, and then, like all of a sudden, like it looked like it was gonna hit me, and then all of a mm -hmm. sudden it just like was like, nah, never mind. And then like burrowed, and I was weird. like, what? Okay, it was really weird. But it's real weird. Oh, well, I probably have to worry weird. about it anymore. I guess. Yeah, I know. Uh... Yeah. Bugs <laughs> bug. Yeah, pops in front of me. I'm not gonna burrow under, you know, tunnels after it pops up in front of me. I'll hit it with my axe. Nice. You should go. You should go check out what uh, Doc and everybody else is looking at around the corner. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. All right. Cool. <laughs> if you guys, if since it's Ufo and Bjorn, you guys can just move yourselves. Yeah, up there, yeah. and then we can just kind of do this right now. Yeah. So. I think since everybody's focused on the the puzzle, the we puzzle. can probably okay. Just so go go ahead. I'll I'll. What is, what is this? So, this, uh, this you make a religion check. Who wants to make a religion check? Oh. Uh, intelligence. Just general intelligence, but if you have proficiency with religion, add that on. Um, I'm not good at this stuff. Someone I'm, else can I, do I it. have proficiency in religion. I would like to roll religion. No, you have to roll a d20 plus 3, Justin. Not roll religion. I'll just type in Slash roll religion. No! Why are my rolls so bad today? But. Oh, uh, well. I no godly things. Wow. Mm, it doesn't come to you. Somebody else wants to make it, they can. Somebody want to help? This yeah, is out I'll... of your uh, purview. Like, you, you still think Cupert. Uh, Cupert. 
Did I say his name right? Uh... Cuthbert? Cuthbert. You studied St. Cuthbert, and, like, he didn't say nothing about this, this, whatever this is. Yeah. Bjorn, Bjorn <laughs> looks at it and goes, Oh, wait! Uh... Wait! Hold on. Hold on. Um, Cuthbert is, is a law, lawful order god, right? Yes. Oh, then, yeah, it, this is St. Cuthbert. Never mind, this is St. Cuthbert. You recognize this instantly. This is St. Cuthbert? It's St. Cuthbert, yeah. Sorry, sorry. It, it, it had a god written in here, but it also said, or some other god or, of knowledge or, or order. So, yeah, it's St. Cuthbert. It's a, it's a different denomination. Like, yeah. The, so, the yeah. beard is you know different. What this actually is. So, check it out. So, there's actually three orders oh of, yeah of of uh of of the the you know cuthberts uh, and this is of the cuthberts <laughs> and this is the order of the stars and i mean yeah yeah the stars and they're they're like pretty hardcore even for for cuthbertians Cuthbert yeah say for cuthbertians yep yeah which of the 30 yeah. pages of your book is this on? Uh, no, this is just stuff you know. This is just there's there's more than just the 30 pages. I just keep the Bjorn the 30 pages because I I, right. I I like to just you know I don't want to like like I said I'm 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 an order of the billets. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. I you was keep, trying to yeah. invest, if I was that would be the chapeau, and they're yeah. always out with the. You keep the the pocket constitution on you, not the whole U.S. code. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. It's... Bjorn, uh, Bjorn can confirm what what he's saying no? as as this is the book uh, that he is teaching me how to read with, so I'm somewhat familiar with the material. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just like it's just like be cool, be nice, don't be dumb. You know. So yeah, right there on page thirty six. Don't be dumb. I so... thought there were only thirty pages. Don't be dumb, dummy. <laughs> so, how many pages there were. If you want me um, to reread the the introduction, I can. But yes. what is what is before you is is what's there. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And if there are there are things you can do to make this a little easier, but we'll see if you guys kind of figure that out. Okay. Can I? Are hey. we in turn order still? No, no. Everybody's focused on here. We we agreed that everybody's just here. Just like we'll, I'll try to make sure everybody gets like an opportunity to do it. But if you have an idea, just speak out. I'd is, like to is, cast Mage is, Hand to try to ooh. pick up a gem. I okay. also have Mage Hand. So Nivara casts Mage Hand, and it reaches out. And is there any particular gem you're grabbing? Like what color and such? What are all the colors? I see like a red, blue, yeah. yellow. There are there are let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine different gems out in front of you. There's a amber gem, a amethyst gem, a citrine gem, a garnet gem, a jade gem, an onyx gem, a quartz gem, ruby. And a sapphire gem. They're all the different colors that are out in front of you. No wooden cups. I'm definitely gonna go with ruby because, from my knowledge, ruby is one of the rarest and most expensive gems. Okay, cool. Mm. So you reach out and you kind of grab a ruby one. Do you just kind of like lift it up? Like yeah, in, yeah. I want to see what happens. Does something come attack my mage hand? Lifting it up inside of the room doesn't do anything. It's just floating there in the air. I'd what like. Is to pull oh, it towards me out of the cave yep okay everybody roll initiative because you God pull damn it. you pull the gem out of the cave <laughs> told you not to do that and it and it and it bursts open and out of it uh appears like a spectral being like a a a warrior clad in armor with a claymore um Let's see here. Uh, yeah, everybody roll initiative, and please put your initiatives in. Uh, ten this is the nine. second time Nivra has initiated combat for the group today. I'm sorry. I thought yeah. I was allowed to leave with one treasure, yeah. not, and, and taking more than one would be the problem. No. <laughs> Justin, not d20. Yeah, there we go. There's your roll. Yeah, Did somebody else want to do something before we jump right into combat? Because I, I'm dumb. Oh, man. 
No, I mean, well, clearly, I, I, only I friendship can leave ask, the room. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going to see what, ask what that, like, statue was again. Sorry. It's a that's... statue of St. Cuthbert with that inscription yeah. below it. Uh, yeah. I was going to see if, like, maybe we needed to, like, put the <sighs> gems on the stat, like, the tomb, but it's all good. No, let's just kill this thing. Yeah, we'll find <laughs> out. In a, we'll do that in a second. Wait, I, uh, uh, All right. for the record, I'll drop the gem when this happens. Oh, I guess the gem explodes, so it doesn't matter. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Alright, it got a 19 for its initiative. Okay. Wait, only one treasure may leave this room, cross with another, and find your tomb. Yep, that How is... How do we have a second treasure... No, Already. I think it means oh, there's I... only one specific treasure that can leave the room, yeah. and any of the others will trigger the bad yep, yep, thing. Yep. Yeah. So everybody I put in their initiative, right? That. Yeah. That's the same. Well, no, oh, not wait, everybody. Oh wait, you wrote a nat, so twenty. Let me, let me, let's oh, put it at the top. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Okay. Little... There... Yeah. Did everybody put their initiative in? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 So Doc Rivers, you get to go first. You're inside a, a ghost appears out of the gem that it just breaks open. And it comes out of the gem right before Ashley. Okay. Um, or I'm going Sorry. to use my uh. Oh, is that what my channel divinity feature is? Whoops, wrong one. Useless against the undead. Sorry. Sorry, I'm moving them around. I'm Are trying to grab. Have... Each... What about turn undead? Don't you have that as a cleric? That's awesome. Spencer, you, you, each one of those is a different little doohickey? Yep, sure is. Let me tell you, that took a while to do. <laughs> Sell them. Oh, yeah. I, I couldn't I even find that. colors. I had to Photoshop them. <laughs> Don't ever say I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't try. Do anything for the stream. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but that actually isn't. That actually isn't that useful in this situation. Because making it run away is just kind of like mm, it's not really going to do anything here. We're just going to have to take care of it. Um. Okay. So I am going to need it to make a deck save. Deck save. It can do that. Okay, there we go. Sorry, I messed up all the gems. Okay, cool. Let's make that deck save. All right. Uh, ten. It fails. So it it's fails. Like a D eight of radiant damage. Ooh, nice, 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 nice. D eight. Oh wow, max damage. Oh yeah! It it you can tell it screams out in pain. It seems to have taken a lot of a lot of damage from that radiant damage from right there. So right. okay. Uh, and, hit it with magic. I'll yes. Scream. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm I'm reading something. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Just I was just reading something real quick. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, all right. So you do that, and that's your turn, right, Doctor Rivers? Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. A, that's my action. Uh, the spirit uh uses its action. It uses horrifying visage. Each non-dead creature within sixty feet of the ghost must succeed on a on a wisdom saving throw. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. Like I made that mistake last time. Wisdom saving throw, everyone, or be frightened for one minute. Uh. Oh, I'm not. Am I? If you roll lower than an an eight, something else happens. Ufo rolled an eleven. Oh, oh boy. Oh, eleven. Like flat. That's like that's what your numbers are. Oh yep. no. <laughs> your guys. Are, oh, I guess that's yeah. Bards are charisma, not wisdom. Oh no. This is not good. This is not good. Okay. Uh. So first off, so. Ufo, you got eleven. Mm -hmm. You're frightened. Okay. Dan, what did what did what did Bjorn get? Five. Five. You got to roll, roll, roll a um, roll a d four for me. 
Okay. Uh, oh no. I get a two. Oh, you age by 20 years. Ah! All right, all right, like, all that's right. That's not reversible, is it? Uh, <laughs> oh, but you're you're a dwarf, man. That's like not like that's like a few years. That's like five. Uh, okay, it can be reversed with a greater restoration spell, but only within 24 hours of it occurring. So, uh, anyways, <laughs> Ashley, what did Nivara get? A seven. Roll a d4 for me. You're an elf. You don't have to worry about aging. <laughs> 30 years, right? You are 30 years older than Novo now! <laughs> Christian? Stop, Novo! I yelled You're back. the older sister now. I rolled oh. a 10. 10, yeah. Everybody's still frightened, by the way. You're frightened, but nothing else happens to you, Novo. Uh, uh, okay. Who else? Uh, Dr. Rivers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Frightened. Everybody's frightened? Oh my god. Wait, what did Ufo get? Did we do Ufo? Yeah, I said I got an 11. 11? He's Everybody's frightened. frightened. Oh, okay. Well... One second. Oh, Bobo already shits their pants. Yeah. <laughs> we never talk about this again. Oh, man. <laughs> okay, well... Yeah, that's all it's gonna do. Um, this is a great time to go over Frighten Rules. Naivara! It is your turn, and you are frightened. Would you like to go over the front rolls, or I can for you? Or if anybody uh, else has to pull it up? I have it pulled up. To be frightened, a frightened creature has disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of its fear is within line of sight. The creature also cannot willingly move closer to the source of its fear. You can only move away from it. Okay, so it's your turn. What are you doing? Uh, G-H-I-J-K-L. Oh. Oh. Where's lesser restoration? There it is. Well, blinded, deafened, paralyzed, or poisoned is not frightened. Nope. So. Oh. Bummer. I'm gonna cast vicious mockery on it. Okay. It makes a wisdom save. A wisdom save. It failed. It got, it got really low. Six. <laughs> yeah, that fails. Um, so I'm gonna, okay, roll 1d4. It takes four psychic damage, and I'm gonna steal myself, and I'm gonna be like, you're the ugliest Casper I've ever seen, you piece of ghost butt. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Anything it, else, Naivara? Uh, yep. No, it has well, the just to remind you, vicious mockery has disadvantage on its next attack roll. Yep, sure does. Okay, with that, Ufo, it is your turn. So I forgot. I did forget one thing. Stout yeah. halflings are brave, and they have advantage on wisdom saving oh. throws against being frightened. Does that apply yeah, here? Yeah, do that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, uh, I got a thirteen. Okay, you, you're just a flat thirteen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for saving throws, I'm trying to remember. Hold on. Well, I can if definitely it for tell saving you that he is thirteen. Then. What's that? Nothing. <laughs> if you meet saving throws, meet AC is meet saving throws. You have to beat, correct? Uh. I believe uh, it's beat me, saving me, throws. Me, Every time somebody ahead. asks this question, the yeah. the actual knowledge leaves my brain. Yeah, that's why I was like, I was like, AC meets. Like, if you meet AC, if the you total hit. equals or exceeds the DC, the ability check is a success. Okay, so, uh, you met it. Okay, oh, which, so you're good. Which means yeah. I'm not frightened. There we go. Okay, it doesn't really change what I was going to do, <laughs> uh, because. Uh, I'm still going to cast Magic Missile at a second level and send four little uh, Roman candles his way. Yeah! Oh, nice. Uh, for uh, boop, boop, boop. four times four, 16 damage as four Dang. little sparklers uh, nice. hit his chest. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, it seems to be... I think it's critical. Hold on. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's critical. It, it is badly hurt. It seems to be, like, it's fading away into etherealness, but it's still kind of hanging in there. 
So, is there anything else Ufo's gonna do? Uh, Christian's face. No, 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 nothing else. I mean, I did any anybody the people that aged probably didn't even like noticeably age. No, <laughs> they're all creatures that like are can go super old yeah. anyways. So, Bjorn, what's what are you doing? Uh, okay. Um. I'm trying to think. It's ethereal form. Like, it's not going to... Okay, I can hit it with my axe. All right. So I am going to use my clockwork amulet. Um, mm -hmm. And what my clockwork amulet that I got way back, like, in one of the mm -hmm. first episodes... Yeah. That lets me take 10 instead of rolling. Yeah. Um, so it lets me dodge past this frightened state that we're in for this turn. I'm going to take 10, add in my... Uh, what would it be five? Yeah. So does a fifteen hit? Uh, I believe it does. Yes. Yep. Okay. Sweet. Okay. It does eight damage. Eight damage. Okay. It's still up. It seems like as you sunk your axe in, its ethereal form doesn't seem to be as damaged by your your kind of physical weapon. Yeah, I figured. Yep. I figured so, that was the case. Is there anything else Bjorn was gonna do? That'd be it. Okay. Da Novo. I see. So, seeing seeing the ineffectiveness of Bjorn's axe, I point out. And I yell a vicious mockery. <laughs> I say, you must have been even weaker when you were alive. <laughs> For now, I mean, yep. It failed. He got a four. <laughs> Uh, I believe that's just uh one d four. Yeah, d four. And he's Doc, already got sure disadvantage from my vicious mockery. Three psychic damage. Boom! You do that. Are you doing anything else in your turn? No. All right, Doctor Rivers, what are you doing? It it seems to be barely hanging in there. It's like flickering in and out of etherealness, and it it seems to be about to be released. Yeah, cool. Um, so one thing that is not actually hindered by the frightened state is saving throw stuff. So I need a um, dex saving throw from the creature. Uh, does a 10 pass? No, it doesn't. Boom, okay. Wow. Alrighty, and that's going to be four radiant damage at another sacred flame, like, just kind of seems to spark up from underneath it. Yep, it dies. How does it, how does this sacred flame kill this ghost? Oh yeah, just, it's like, it's like a flash up from underneath it, and just like, holy kind of flames. Yeah. And then it's just kind of like, stinged smoke. Like, like, that. like, if anybody's seen Supernatural, and they burn the bones, and then the ghost, mm -hmm, like... Mm -hmm. Exactly like that. Yeah. Okay. If anybody Burst hasn't seen it, if you've ever lit phosphorus on fire, kind of like that. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. As the ghost leaves this world, um, you guys hear it, like, it kind of, like, it, like, opens its eyes, like, wide, and it goes, I remember now. I remember my name. Lou. And he fades away. And it is getting pretty close to the end of our stream. So let's, uh, if anybody has any questions about how to play D&D or the kind of rules we're doing right now or about the Essentials Kit, please put them in the chat right now while the party sees if they can figure out this puzzle before the end of the stream. 13 minutes on the clock. Let's go. Bye, Lou. Right. I'm really sorry, guys. I screwed that up. Yeah, let's stay in turn order. Does that sound good? Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. So Okay. Navara. Yep. No, uh, Justin oh, still yeah. gets to move, right? Yeah, Justin, you can move. Can I move closer to the statue? Sure can. Do I see if it's like pointing at anything or anything like that? 
it, it it has its hands like on this well i guess with like i'll 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 describe it like in it it's it's uh it has like this giant like diamond in its hand and it's just holding it there. Oh, maybe that's the treasure. Yeah. Yep. Is there anything else you're gonna do? That's it. That's it. That's all I can do. I cast Navara and then moved and and then got a cool a bonus perception check. Uh, I will. Please don't bring another gem outside. I am not going to do that. I'm going to go stand next to Doc Rivers. Um, I'm going to call out to the party and be like, I, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I totally misinterpreted that. I thought if you brought two gems out, you would die. But if you weren't greedy and you just bought one, you'd be fine. Didn't realize it meant a very specific single gem and everything else is going to gonna. gonna do what Lou did. Yeah. Um, All sorry. right. Sorry. <laughs> Ufo? Um, the gem that Naivara took out, that, like, yes, disintegrated, Ruby. right? It, it, like, cracked open. It cracked open, but it's now outside the... the cave? Yeah, yeah, uh, I guess so, yeah. Huh. Can I, can I cast Identif- or, uh, Detect Magic? And, uh... Get a sense of like what school of magic, because clearly there's something magical going on here. Yeah, imprisoning ghosts would be abjuration, wouldn't it? Yeah, abjuration is. Yeah, I'd say probably abjuration. So like, I'm seeing mostly abjuration magic going on in here. Y yeah. Yep. I guess that makes sense for a trapped room. That yep. shouldn't surprise me. Anything else before we move on? Uh, no, just. You said the the statue wasn't holding anything. It was just kind of like had its <laughs> the hands. gem, the diamond gem. Yeah. Oh, it was like, holding a diamond. diamond. It was holding yeah. a diamond. Yep. I I guess from from what I can see, like not even making a perception check, it's a diamond, not like a stone cut to look like a diamond. Not like any of the other gems on the floor. Okay. All right. Um. Yep. Yeah. Obviously, I I hope somebody else notices that. I'm sure somebody else has noticed that. Yeah. But I uh, pointed out. We can work with, like, discovery of knowledge is shared. We'll yeah. just say that. Bjorn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I have Mage Hand. And I'm going to grab that diamond. Okay. Right. Uh, you Mage Hand over to the diamond that the statue is holding, and you try to pull it, and it, it's, it, like, the fingers are collapsed around it. It doesn't move. Uh... Okay. I think maybe we gotta switch it. So is there? I want to look around or like see if I notice like another diamond or something. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. um, I'll allow. Mm. You can do a wisdom insight oh. check. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that flat ten? Flat ten. Well, good. You passed. <laughs> oh yeah. Bjorn senses Bjorn, that the, hi. Bjorn senses that the number of each type of gen gem isn't arbitrary. And with that, we're gonna go on to Novo. Hmm. Right, I'm gonna. No one's going to walk in to the cave here. Yeah. Um. And I, yeah, we we were assuming at this point. I I I too. Um, gain the the knowledge. I I see the statue holding a diamond. Right. Yep. You see everything um, everybody else says, kind of noticed, yeah. Hmm. And you said the... <sighs> I don't want to 
cause any issues. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? Are you gonna um, try to observe the room? Do you want to make a check? What what's kind of what are you kind of thinking? Um, are there any any diamonds that are? So this is just made out of stone. This yep. this uh, statue here. Yep. Oh wait, it's um, made out of stone. The statue is made out of stone. Stonecraft. Okay. As a dwarf. No, okay. it tells me everything about, um, I forgot about that. It tells me, at, like, hold on, uh, so Oh, yeah, your stone oh, sense. We can do that when it comes back we'll to Bjorn's turn. have to wait your yeah. turn, Dan. Yeah. So, you you no, can go no, ahead and no, do that, I, Novo. Keep going. Sorry, I just remembered. Um, can I look to see if there are any diamonds that are different or different from the rest? Yeah, yeah. So I'll read off the gems again. So the diamond in the hand is a diamond, and it's its own thing. All the gems on the ground, there's there's a bunch of different gems, and they're all different amounts. Okay. Uh, there's amber, amethyst, citrine, garnet, jade, onyx, quartz, rubies, and sapphires. You're going to need okay, to slow so down no or, or the, type that out the... somewhere. Okay. Uh, yeah, I uh, didn't remember that. I I assume, I thought one of the 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 silver I, the white ones for diamonds maybe. You can see all the different colors on the ground as well. Yeah. Um. I'm not very good with gems though, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know technically. I think M M this is, is the purple ones, right? But that's about it. We we are on. A... Right. Yeah. So that's what you want to do, Christian. Yep, yep. Come um, on. So, okay. Um, so, Everybody else uh, to think about what they want to do on their turns. Yeah, ob observing uh, these here, what would I find, which would I find uh, has the same shape, uh, or closer shape to the diamond uh, that she's, the, the statue's holding? Uh, none appear to be the same shape as the diamond. That that doesn't seem to be uh kind of like that doesn't seem to be like they're all they're all kind of like cut differently. But the diamond is just like its own big thing, and the other gems are just kind of littered on the floor. Okay. All right. I'm sitting my turn. Okay, Doctor Rivers. Um. So Doc Rivers is going to try and take the uh, diamond out of St. Cuthbert's hand. It does not That's move. Safe. It is, it is clasped right. tightly in the hand. Um, then Doc is going to call out... You can do another religion check if you want. Oh, alright, well then You can maybe pray to your god. Yes. <laughs> I will make this religion check and pray to my god for Do release it. of this gem so that we may please have it. God? Nope. Nope. All right. Well, this is I'm... just hey, ridiculous. Um, real Let's quick, can you guys like, roll above eight all game? Can you guys move your characters to like the entrance of the cave so I can count the gems? Sorry, I just yeah, but... that might be good. Uh, you know what, uh, Dan? Let me help you out there. Yeah, yeah. I'll go ahead and read off the numbers of each type of gem. Are yeah, you Are you ready for that? Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. What's as, up, Dalton? As a heads up, Ufo on his turn was gonna go in and start sorting them. Sure. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, so that would how about also with get the combined the effort yeah. of of Bjorn? Ne Nevara yeah. will help. Okay, everybody, everybody helps out. Here's what you find: there are nine amber gems. Uh, okay. Fourteen amethyst. Okay. Eight citrine. Okay. Five garnet. Okay. Eighteen jade. Okay. Sixteen onyx. Alrighty. One quartz. Twelve ruby. Mm hmm. Thirteen sapphire. So okay. I, I do have a clarifying question. Yeah. Does the twelve ruby include the one I broke? Uh, yes, it does. Um,. I don't know, I'm kind of thinking, I mean, the one quartz kind of, you know, what if it, like, turns out to be something else inside the quartz, you know? Yeah, do you want to grab another gem and see what's inside of it? 
We will you can have only to... lay, leave with one quartz because there's only one quartz. We'll have to do that next time on this episode of Dragon Ball Z, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. If we don't have any other ideas, what was the name of the the spirit? You said it said his name. Lou. 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 Yep, he said you... his name is Lou. I'll, I'll allow a Arcana check and a Religion check. Whoever wants to do that. Um, can I can I make a like a history check with with stone cunning? Yeah. It's like a, okay, sweet. Yeah. So I realized that on that previous check, um, I should have added plus five. Oh so shit! Cunning, Ooh, I get to, I, I, because I'm proficient, and it says you get to double your proficiency bonus. Yeah, uh, a lot of who were Saint Cuthbert's followers? Uh, were they any specific type of race? Then, do you know Justin, or Saint, were they? Saint Cuthbert, no, Saint Saint Cuthbert ain't no racist man. Okay, cool, cool, cool. He takes all kinds. So you can tell that the followers of Saint Cuthbert, like really, like they they were they follow his his word, and they're they they probably made this to kind of like reward someone who was lawful good, who was who wasn't greedy of heart. Um, and without greedy of heart, you know that like they probably made this in like a way to like trap anybody from thinking like oh the gems that are free of course anybody would try to take those that's going to be the wrong answer like with something that you figure out that that isn't related to like taking gems is probably how you'll be rewarded um is his other hand empty yeah, the, uh, yeah. i thought both hands were holding the diamond yeah, uh, it's his favorite weapon is a club or mace. Yeah, well, I'll say that he's holding a mace, and mm. that's not important. <laughs> Does the statue react in any way if I like, I don't know, like hold a quartz near it? Like, give it? Can I offer it a quartz? No, okay. holding a stone doesn't appear. Are there any like? Are, do there any appear to be any beveling or any like inlays that we could put a stone into? No, it doesn't appear so. Is there anything right, else? Walk out can I lay one please? of the gems so at the end of the statue? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, but it doesn't do anything. And it sounds like, <laughs> from from the guesses that are being told, uh, that we're probably not going to solve this today. <laughs> so, everybody who's watching us, you'll have to join us next week when we can see if the party can figure out the answer to this riddle by next time um what's uh, real quick before we go what's everybody's plans when they get back to town are, do you think you guys are gonna go after like uh cryovane or what do you think what do you think you're gonna do i mean we need to turn in our our quest right stuff collect the reward mm -hmm. um and then probably spend that reward money arming up on yeah on arming up maybe asking around town for for any like uh any new knowledge anybody's picked up see if they have any ideas about what might be useful going up because now we also know its location so we might ask around about that area yeah um see if we need to know anything about the area maybe bring anything to be prepared mm -hmm. and then yeah probably go right for it because the dragon seems to be on our tail okay yeah so I guess we'll pick up next week when maybe the party figures out this puzzle and they prepare to face Cryovane within his keep. So tune in next week when we figure that out. Before we go, Ashley, can you read us those attributions? Absolutely. So uh, as we've been doing, we have been using the Dungeons and Dragons Essentials Kit. Uh, for this adventure, it is called the Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. Uh, for our online uh, gameplay, we have been using the platform Roll20. It's a great free resource. Um, for our different tokens, we've been using colorful characters from Drive Through RPG, Token Treasury Monsters, and the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Character Art Pack, which is free through Roll20. Um, to make our player characters, we did that in Hero Forge, a great resource. They have a lot of different types of things that you can personalize, not just fantasy related. You can do all kinds of characters, cyberpunk, space, whatever you want, really. Yeah. Um, 
Was this puzzle from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything? It sure was. You guys All did the right. easy ones. This is the first medium one. It's pretty hard to me. Um, this is the Tasha's Cauldron. Thank you to Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. That is a Dungeons and Dragons book uh, where Spencer got this puzzle from and added yep. it into the adventure. Um, and as always, please support your local game stores if you can. They're a really great part of the community. Great resource for you to find groups to play with. Um, we love supporting small businesses. So thank yeah. you for tuning in, guys. We will see you next week, 7 p.m. Eastern time to fig figure out what's going on in this weird room that Navara screwed up yeah. right away. <laughs> Navara's just a curious little gal. All right. Well, yeah. So like Ashley said, thank you for tuning in. This has been the ABCs of RPGs, where we teach you the basics of tabletop role-playing games. Uh, thank you for tuning in to our D&D campaign for the Essentials Kit. And uh, thank you to my players. Thank you. Thank you, Dalton, Dan, yeah. Justin, Ashley, and Christian. Uh, and to everybody at home, we'll see you next week. Keep learning. Bye, everybody. Bye.